Okey. No, ada orang dia tak nak cakap English sebab dia nak faham betul. <laughs> okay, okay. Alright, okay. So, um, thank you for coming. Good morning. So, let's make a start today. So, um, we're going to divide this um, session today into um, a number of slots. So, in general, we're going to start with, um, I think I got a mic. Where's my mic? <coughs> I cannot shut my, my throat kind of um, feeling funny now. It's a good thing we've got all this stuff. <coughs> all right. Um, do you have a copy of this? Okay, good. So, um, we're going to start this um, with the introduction for the plant requirement because I was told to give this brief introduction first because you are dealing with different species of plant. And even though the basic fundamentals are the same, you still need to uh, bear in mind that these plants they, they come from different family, they have different life cycle, naturally. And since you are doing an experiment with all these plants, you need to know how to arrange the plants, how to take care of the plants, and when to give your treatments. Because many times in agriculture, you cannot give your treatment because you feel like it. You need to follow the, the face of the plants and be consistent about it. Otherwise, whatever treatments that you give, they're not going to work very well. Or the reproducibility of your finding is going to be very questionable, right? <clears throat> so we're going to start with that and also some experimental design. Um, I hope this is what you requested to Elite. So I'll just go through with it uh, very uh, briefly, okay? Then we're going to look at the um, because we're dealing with photosynthesis, we're going to see the general view of the chloroplast. Because you're dealing with your products, and the claim is your products do something to the chloroplast. It, it has to do something to the chloroplast first be before photosynthesis can have any impact. Right? So we're going to see that. And since the, the focus is to quantify, the effects of your products on the light parameters, we're going to specifically touch on the light reaction of photosynthesis, right? Because photosynthesis, <coughs> you, can, you can see, looking at the name, it means it consists two reactions, the photo reaction and also the synthesis reaction. Your part is actually pretty much focusing on this side of the reaction, right? But since you are using Lycor, automatically, when you log in your data, you're going to get the result for this as well, right? But this actually a bit more um, biochemical um, to, 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 to begin with if you want to go down this road. Okay, this is more physics kind of stuff. So since you are more interested with the photoluminescence effects, you know, fluorescence, phosphorescence, this is the site that you want to focus on. So that's what uh, we are dealing with today. Okay, and then we're going to uh, prep the plants. I'm going to show you how to prep the plants. And we will do the measurements with the machine. Uh, we have the machines here. That's already. Um, the sequence of the uh, measurements today, I think, uh, let me see, we should have this over. I hope you have this as well. So you should have two handouts, the theory handouts and also these handouts. Maybe they are, they, they, they'll give you in, in the bit, All right? So these handouts is for the, offer, to operate the, machine okay um 
the truth is you you are dealing with um, living things uh, living things they are very annoying at times okay but they have pattern okay you 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 can um, detect the pattern and you understand it and things should be um, pretty much stabilized all the time okay because wh whatever um, products that you give you are still not dealing with stressing the plants so it should be fairly easy and straightforward to do because some people they give um, the, their treatments are stressing the plants they are studying droughts they are studying heat stress salinity even cosmic radiation okay that kind of make things haywire and you need uh, you know longer time to interpret all the data all right so let's start with the theory so let's i'll uh, try to finish this uh, about one hour let's see <clears throat> i hope this is okay i don't want to turn it into full screen because this thing kind of acting funny um, earlier all right <clears throat> So we're going to start with the fundamentals of the uh, plant requirement. So regardless of the plant species that you are using, you need to pay attention to ensure the plants are receiving all these basic requirements. We here, we, we call this formula as the allowing formula, A, L, W, and G, allowing the plant to grow healthily, happily, decently, and appropriately, okay? Because if you neglect some of these components, your plants can still live, but they might not producing any flowers, meaning that they cannot complete the life cycle decently as you hope to, okay? So what are these components? There are air, light, water, nutrients, and growing mediums. So long story short if these components are fulfilled you can pretty much grow your plant anywhere in the cave even in, in the international space system so those nasa astronauts people they use the same concept as well making sure the plants that they have in the space system receiving all of this condition so that's why they can, could uh, grow the plants while the space system is orbiting our planet you might wonder, that's, that's, that, that, that's, that's not a regular place. Well, it's not a regular place, but the fundamental requirements of the plants have been fulfilled. So that's good to go. So we're going to look at um, each of these um, very generally, because I think most of you um, should, should have some experience gardening before, so you know uh, the, 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 this basic fundamental. So the first uh, component is A, for air. So the, the, in the air, um, number one, air contains the ingredients for photosynthesis, namely the carbon dioxide and also the oxygen. Believe it or not, even though people keep highlighting carbon dioxide is the main ingredient for photosynthesis, plants still require oxygen at the same time. It's true they can produce oxygen, but before that oxygen is produced, they need to have some precursor first. Okay. So oxygen is needed um, to make the metabolic going on in the plant. So if you remember the, the, the cell diagram, you have different organelles in the cell. You have chloroplast, you have mitochondria. So mitochondria is the one that consuming lots of this oxygen to break down sugar, which is produced by the chloroplast. Okay, so one is producing, one is breaking down. Catabolic and anabolic process. Okay, All right. In the air as well, pay attention to the humidity and also the temperature. Okay, because the combination of this will ensure whether your plant can perform well or otherwise according to the life phase that it is in now. So plant has this um, life cycle phase, like pretty much like us. We all started off as babies, then we grow as teenagers, 
then you hit your adolescence, you become a youth, an adult, a veteran, and aging population, okay, retired people. So plants also have this uh, requirement. So um, the diagram that you see here is kind of like the sweet spot to achieve when you are dealing with a plant, especially in the indoor uh, cultivation. So you need to play around with the right percentage of relative humidity coupled with um, the right temperature. If you violate this, something will happen to your plant, even though physically it looks okay, it might be struggling inside. It depends on the species to species, but in general, um, I can take one example here. <clears throat> I think, yeah, you got, you got the Fahrenheit scale here and the Celsius scale here. So you can see here, um, this, this has been divided into, into different phases. So is this going to be universally accepted? Not quite. If you are growing outdoor, it's a different uh, story. So how do you know this? This is from um, agronomic experience. Okay. So each agronomist, specialist in certain crops, in certain location, they have their own recipe, right? The right combination. So what, if you violate this, what's going to happen? Photosynthesis is not going to do very well. And the plant, for example, if you're hoping for it to flower and producing fruits, you might say, I didn't follow this, but I still got uh, my fruits and flowers to come about. Yes, instead of having 10, you only have three. So the optimum potential of the plant is not attained because this is being violated. Okay, right. <clears throat> and the second component is the light. So, which is very relevant to you because you're dealing with the photoluminescence based uh, products. So what you need to understand all the time with the light is light is not unidirectional entity, okay? When talk, uh, talking about light, especially when you are dealing with it on a regular basis, understand it. Light has properties, three important, important properties, namely the light quantity, quality, and also the period, the length of the light given. Why, why this is happening? <clears throat> because this is due to the dual nature of light. So, dual properties of light. So, light can exist in the form of particle, Light at the same time can exist in the form of energy. In the form of particle, this is what you usually see, people call it photon. And in the form of energy, you measure it in the form of um, wavelength. Okay, in the form of particle, you actually can, if you're using the right machine, you can actually count the number of light particles for a given time, for a given area. This machine can do that. So you're going to see that the light um, unit for this, you're going to see something like this. Micro ball, square meter per second. <clears throat> Look at this, mole. If you remember, mole is actually, do you still remember mole from your chemistry lesson? So mole is actually something to use to um, group number of things together. For example, uh, if I say single, what number you associate in your mind? One. If I say dual or twin, two. If I say dozen, three. If I say uh, century, What? What number? You just say in your head. Hundred. If I say more, six point oh three times ten to the power of twenty three, and this is the Avogadro's constant. Avogadro's constant. 
So more actually, you need to mentally picture number in your head. In science, especially in physics and chemistry, to write this number, six trillion, billion, million, in order to achieve this power of 23, that's very lengthy and cumbersome. Nobody's going to do that. So they just use this more, easy, easy, okay? So photon, particles can be counted using that machine, right? And the second thing is the energy. Energy is in the form of the flag, and popularly in many literature, you see the lambda sign, okay? The unit is nanometer. It depends. Most, most of the time, people use nanometer. So for the sake of photosynthesis, the length of the wavelength, which is photosynthetically of interest, is between 400 to 700 nanometer. Okay? This amount of wavelength actually correspond to specific energy level. 400 nanometer, it actually translates physically to our eyes in the form of color. Okay? So this becomes the blue color in our eyes. For 700 nanometers in our eyes, it becomes the red color. Okay? That is all. If, you, if you're wondering what happened to the wavelength before 400 nanometer, beyond 700 nanometer, what happened to those um, wavelengths? What color do they appear to your eyes? Um, this is actually the UV side, the gamma, the X-ray. Our eyes cannot see because this is the li biological uh, limitation in our body. The, the retina of your eyes, you know, the, the tissue at the back of your eye, have specialized cells called the rod and cone cells. These cells, God, nature has designed it somehow to be responsive to this wavelength only, which is the rainbow color, just that color, okay? So whatever out of this range, before 400 nanometer, beyond 700 nanometer, your eyes cannot see, but you can feel the effects, okay? For example, the UV, you cannot see the UV. But if you leave your hand outside you, uh, under the UV, eventually you're going to get skin cancer. You, you get the effects. Kind of like the wind. You cannot see the wind, but you can see the presence of the wind, right? What about the beyond 700? That is the infrared. You cannot see infrared, but you can feel it in the form of warmth. Feel warmer, thermal energy. So the warmth that you feel right next to your hand, that is actually light. Light in the range of far-red and infrared region. Okay? So it's, it's a good way to look at things now. Whenever you, 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 you're talking about heat, you're talking about energy, that is actually light. Light of long wavelength, beyond 700. You cannot see, but you can feel it. Right? Right. Okay. So. And finally is the light duration. So the, the, the length of the light given after you have fulfilled the, these two combinations, the correct quantity, certain amount of micromole, with the right color. If you give completely green color, the plant is not going to be happy about it. So you need to have a good amount of spectrum combination. Okay, so light quantity, light quality has been fulfilled and now give it in the right amount of time the photo period six hours 12 hours depending on your plant species some plants they cannot flower if they receive less light uh, in a day we call it the long day plant for example like um, we don't have that problem here actually it's, it's more for the temperate four seasons country like the daffodils uh, many, many plants. Rose, not rose in our country, rose, rose in, in temperate countries, okay? <clears throat> right. And the next component is water. So water, um, why, 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 do, why plants need water? Like, um, 
to some degree is actually the same like us due to the effects of um, evaporation and transpiration transpiration is um, equivalent to our um, perspiring you know you are sweating why to cool off the plant okay not because the plant is under the sun even the plant in the temperate country it's cool right but why the plant need to transpire so much why do you need to sweat because all these biochemical activities they are producing heat so over the time this heat is building up so the plants need to cool off and also this transpiration pulling out the water upwards Pulling out the water will ensure the whole body of the plant receiving nutrients homogeneously and evenly, right? And since there are water is a universal solvent, many nutrients, ions, and nourishment, as well as chemical that is beneficial to the plant, can go up along and be distributed to the whole plant as well, right? So. Water is not only to make the plant look fresh and not wilting, but it's actually kind of like the blood of the plant. Okay? We already have our blood, we have our, our water, but we don't need our water to make us look firm and solid because we got bones. Okay? We got the framework of, of, of our, our bodily stature. Plants do not have that. So the water with the pressure building up in it will give the plant the stature that's why one of the reasons because the, all the plants are not wilting from the far you can know oh that is banana plant that is the coconut that is the choy sum that is the okra because they are not wilting imagine you go out now all plants are wilting you're not going to be able to recognize anybody okay so it gives the morphological characteristic and also this uh, transpiration and stuff Okay, and the next component, uh, the fourth component is the nutrients. Regardless of the treatments that you give to the plant, you need to fulfill the basic nutrient requirements. Okay, it has been agreed that for, the, for most plants, especially agricultural and horticultural plants, to complete a healthy life cycle, 17 elements are needed for the plant this is the concept that the people in hydroponic use because in hydroponic you do not have the soil you only have water so in this water people mix up with nutrient solution containing all these required um, elements not all elements are needed in the water because some are actually present in the air like the carbon dioxide uh, and also water uh, in the form of vapor <coughs> what happens if you eliminate one of these or not giving enough your plant will underperform or if it becomes too severely some biochemical processes cannot happen right meaning that <coughs> you should be getting uh, 10 leaves supposedly but because you kind of not remove but reducing the concentration you get lesser leaf and the plant is actually not being completely happy maybe it takes longer for it to flower and and, and achieve um, the the um, maturity stage eventually okay another thing you need to bear in mind with this the the amount of nutrient changes according to the life phase of the plant when it's in vegetative when it's baby it's not going to require the same amount of food Look at when you were a baby. Do you see any baby eating fried rice? So the nutrients requirement is, this, is, is not the same, right? Okay. And finally is the growth media, the G. So in the growth media, um, since you're, you're dealing with hydroponic, I think it's not so much of an issue. But under the growth media, the growth media, it also includes the spacing of the plant. And this is, this is more, um, more relevant to those who are practicing intercropping, okay? Some, some people, because in agriculture, it's a business. You need to make the crop as dense as possible because there's money, 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 money. But 
if you make it too dense, you're going to you, you're going to make the plants unhappy somehow. So this is a good uh, field of research actually. Some people actually they um, study the intercropping harmony between plants. They combine but apparently some plants when they are together, they are mutually beneficial to each other. For example, like this one, um, corn and also soybean. Yeah, so um, corn is a very fast growing um, crop. You can harvest corn in 70 days, very fast. So the natural requirement for the corn is very, very high. So when you grow it along in the ridges with um, a soybean, soybean is a natural nitrogen fixator. Nitrogen, even though in our air, it's about how many percent? 70 percent, I think, nitrogen in our air. That is unusable by the plant. It needs to be converted to the bioavailable form first. Plant cannot absorb nitrogen gas into its body and utilize it. It's not happening. However, some species, they become a host to a certain bacteria and this bacteria convert the molecular nitrogen into bioavailable nitrogen such as nitrate, nitrites, ammonium and so on. And these are the usable form uh, for the plants, right? So, then can uh, this, uh, the soil um, to be reached to the uh, it, 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 so from, 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 from the sky, mm -hmm. the rain comes down, um, it gets dissolved, it becomes nitrite. That's one path. There are many paths. Another path is nitrogen in the sky, lightning happens, it splits, N2 splits, when it splits, it combines with the water, so it becomes another form, it falls down, plant can use it up. So all this natural phenomenon kind of ensuring the cycle of nitrogen happening smoothly. Sometimes it takes a longer path, sometimes it's, it's more direct. And that depends on the topology and geographic location as well, right? In, in Malaysia, the, the, the weathering is, you know, weathering, Lulu uh, Hawa, it is, is very rapid. So all this cycle is happening super, super fast. We don't have problem with nitrogen because we have petronas to get nitrogen uh, from, 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 uh, from the fossil fuel. Uh, but we, we do have issue with uh, phosphate and potassium and which we, um, import a lot. Okay, right. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, for the macronutrient and micronutrient, mm. they're very different for each type of plant. Yes. Very different. Yes. Um, in in the sense of agriculture, horticulture, that will likely depends on your organ of interest. Some people are interested to harvest leaf. Some people, they don't care about the leaf. I just want the flower, I want the fruit. So the nutrients are going to be different. If you go to the orchid industry, they don't care about the NPK. They, 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 they worry about something else. Those, um, orchid, so orchid, um, they need, actually they need, some orchid they need uh, lower temperature just to trigger floral induction. Yeah, and they, they want, the fertilizer in the form of foliar application. Yeah. If you go to the people growing peanuts, the ground nuts, they, 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 they want molybdenum. Yeah, because that is for the food, for the bacteria in the soil. So it depends, it depends on the crop. So if you go to literature, I mean, you can go to Wikipedia. Wikipedia will tell you pretty much uh, the agronomic practice of this. Yeah. So what happens if you violate this? Your plant can, can, can still live, but it's not optimal, it's not to the right potential. Yeah. And then you, you wonder why your neighbor is doing so well, or maybe he has red first. All right. All right. Okay. So, um, for the plant requirement, I think that's all. So, this is the second part uh, for this slide, which is the um, uh, experimental design. I am not a statistician per se. So I'll just mention this just so that you, you are aware the, the way you place your experimental unit, the plant. Because some people, they have lots of that, never a problem. They can use it. Some people, they cannot go 
horizontal they can go vertical okay so this is just to give you exposure so that you know this needs to be taken into account for the reason of statistics and making a conclusion scientifically right <clears throat> so um there, there are a number of ways you can um arrange your plants okay so in 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 um in science we call it uh, bio biometric okay statistic is the analysis of the data but for for the the experimental design layout and combining it with statistic that is called biometric okay we we have many in our 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 faculty for that so um how how do you know which design to use for example this design is called crd completely randomized design and this is the easiest one the basic one assuming that everything is homogeneous you have a two by two area of of experimental plot everything is the same it is flat the lighting is even the water is homogeneous the it's all the same so you can use something simple like this um, um, CRD and then if it gets a bit more um, complicated you might be needing um, blocking because there is a heterogeneity factor present in your growing environment for example you are growing your plant on a slope okay the plant that is located on the top of the slope obviously they are receiving different amount of nutrient lighting water and so on compared to those that are growing near the ground at the bottom of the slope so if you just simply randomly pick the plant and then measure and make conclusion that is incorrect because you have not taken into account the heterogeneity factors along the slope okay so blocking under the the, the 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 design of randomized complete block design will help you to eliminate this so if you are seeing any effects is it due to your treatment or is it due to the blocking reasoning so this the correct choosing of the layout will help you to determine that <coughs> and the next is um, the split plot so um, in the split split plot design you just basically have this um, number of plot but in each plot you have all the combinations of your um, treatment okay so your treatments can be of various levels maybe you decide to test different plants coupled with different fertilizer rate okay and this we call it two factor if it's only one factor, meaning that maybe you play around with species of the plant, everything else, you're, you're keeping it the same. But when you combine it with other things to worry about, we call it two factors. Okay? So, so, so let's say we have an experiment. We want to try both uh, fertilizer and fertilizer rate. Okay. Uh, and then we and each factor can have its own level. Yep. Two factors. Yep. So um split plot, um this depends on the whatever land that you are available. Okay, I'm just giving you the exposure. So this is something that you need to take into account. Look at what you have in hand, the nature of your uh, treatment, one level or two level, and so that you can make a um, good uh, judgment. And finally, oh, I just mentioned this one because this is quite popular for the plant factory experiment. This nested design. Sometimes you cannot replicate your plant factory. It's just not possible because of the money constraint and everything. So in the same factory, you need to split it within the same environment. That is not optimum, of course, but because of the constraint, you only have one factory, make the partitioning within the factory and that is called the nested design for example like this one assume i know this is mouse let's assume that this is your factory plant factory plant factory one plant factory two so you have your mouse and then you have your the cells of the mouse 
still belonging to this factory. Okay. The optimal way, of course, you have multiple number of factories because you want to be certain. Even with different factory set, factories number that I have, the result still consistent. But sometimes it's not it's not possible, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and sorry, to yeah. And if another thing is, after you have chosen all of the uh, the right design layout for experiment, you need to understand now what is your these are actually terminologies in statistics, okay? What is your experimental unit? What is your observational unit? Okay, and what is your blocking if you are using blocking? Why this is important? This is, this is important because for the reason of statistics. In the statistical software of any kind, when you use, it's going to ask this. Otherwise, it cannot run the statistical uh, analysis properly. So, this is the advice that given to all students. Before you start experiment, lay out your experimental design like this first. And then start labeling what is your experimental unit, what is your replicates. In your replicates, is there any further units in the replicates? Yeah, so these terminologies, get it correct and just write it out on a piece of paper. It will save a lot of headaches do at the end while you are dealing with the statistic. Because statistic is, is let's face it, it's, it's not that easy sometimes. Right? So, um, I think for your experiment, I do not know your, your experimental setup how, but this is something you need to worry, be worried about. Okay? What happens if you violate this? You cannot do all this thing properly, this ANOVA thing. ANOVA is the, one of the statistical tests, analysis of variance. Even ANOVA, there are many kinds of ANOVA. One way, two way, repeated measures of ANOVA, non parametric ANOVA. Right? <coughs> okay. Right. And yeah. So after you have done all these statistical biometric measures, why? Why? Why is it important? Why is it? Again, it comes to your product. You want to make a right conclusion of the product. You want to avoid these things. So the errors, you want to avoid errors. You want to be certain about your conclusion. The only way you can be certain about your conclusion after you have fulfilled all this statistical SOP, choosing the right experimental design, making the right kind of layout, use the right kind of uh, statistical test to come up with the conclusion at the end. So the idea is to get the correct conclusion at a time, okay? So uh, maybe you, you don't want to look at this. So the errors, sometimes, it's called um, true positive. You see, you, you see a, a lady is bloated, oh, oh, it's true. She is pregnant, okay? What about the false positive? You have, you have done all the testing and it seems like, oh, all the tests looking, showing that, oh, grandpa, you are pregnant. But is that correct? Yeah, so you are kind of self-validating yourself to make sure that the conclusion is making sense, okay? So all this statistical SOP will prevent you are diagnosing grandpa as pregnant, okay? Which is the false positive. Or you don't want to diagnose the type 2 error here, which is false negative. You are not pregnant for this lady, even though she is obviously bloated and big. So long story short, when you're making claim with your product, you don't want to claim something which is it's not capable of doing, or it is capable of doing, but it's actually not due to its effect. It's actually due to something else because you didn't pay attention to experimental design. It's actually not because, for example, the, 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 carbon, the quantum dots didn't actually get into the chloroplast. It's actually because the carbon interact with nutrients in the cytoplasm producing something else. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's just scientific um, step. 
to prevent all this um, type 1 error and also the type 2 error. Yeah, that is all to it, okay? So I, I hope you get the idea because um, I shouldn't be uh, going too long about this. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, we know that uh, all plants require fertilizer. So I'm thinking the control would be normal plant, normal uh, just normal fertilizer, and another one would be normal plant, normal fertilizer, and addition of uh, photosynthesis enhancer. Mm -hmm. So I would say that the first one is the control. Whatever conventionally done is the control. Yeah. So how about, um, is it necessary to have a plant which has zero fertilizer? Because, not necessarily, like, because we know that... Fertilizer is a requirement. Is a requirement. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I'm thinking that the plant with no fertilizer is a negative control. Is it is not right? No. no, that is actually in medical community. The one with the placebo, just water in the field, yeah. If, if plant, you give placebo, empty water, it will die. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it, that's why I, I mentioned about the fundamental. You need to fulfill the fundamental first. Then only you want to give whatever, because without this fundamental, the plant cannot, cannot grow anyway. Yeah, yeah. So no need the one without the placebo, you know, without the placebo, it won't grow. Because you are dealing with hydroponic, if you are using land, the the soil got nutrients natural already, so that's that's a different story. Yeah, even then, people still need to sample the soil, send for analysis to know the basic reading for the soil for that given month, for that given year, for that given day. Because during raining season, the nutrient profile for the soil change. Yeah. I'm thinking about the because uh, okra that you use is uh, from the commercial seeds. Ah. Commercial seeds is not designed to grow for very long time. It, it's super fast. When it's super fast, super hungry, nutritionally demanding. If you don't give any fertilizer, just a regular soil, no, 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 that's not going to happen. Uh, but there's a good chance it's not going to flower even. Yeah. So just, just use a basic fertilizer, maybe 50 kilogram nitrogen per hectare to all polybags. And then start giving your treatment whatever you want to give. Uh, by the way, your suggestion to approach the PP was they will help us. <laughs> to approach what? To approach uh, put, uh, put, uh, put set. Ah, yeah, 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 ah, yeah. They, they, they got the officers, yeah, they got the officers, like, tak tahu buat apa, bagi dia kerja sikit. No, sometimes the things are not written in books, you, you just need to ponder, like, common sensely, logically, some, some, somebody, somebody can actually help me do this. They, they are the people that can help you. Yeah. Uh, no, plus they, they have the equipment, they have the materials. Yeah, even if they are unsure, they have superior, they, they can answer all the concerns. Okay, right. Okay, and finally for this um, session um, today, uh, I think this is the, should be the last one. Okay, about the life cycle. So this is the life cycle that I was talking about earlier. So you got your choice sum. I hope that this is choice sum and also your okra. You understand about this cycle. There's a growth cycle, the reproduction cycle, and also the senescence cycle. These are the three important things. Vegetative growth, reproduction, flowering, fruiting, and also the senescence. If you are dealing with annual plant, meaning that plant, only one cycle, gone. We are not dealing with orchard trees, fruit trees, that is perennial. They could last forever, cycle after cycle after cycle. Did you say reproduction or production? Reproduction. Reproduction. Uh, 
also calculation of photosynthesis enhancer, for example, uh, would it be suitable? Uh, when would it be suitable? So, so the the suggestion is not to give it during this reproduction stage. So avoid uh, give it before it. Reproduces. Yeah, yeah. So you have a quite a lengthy time here. Why we don't go to the reproduction stage? Because because the the leaves during reproduction they don't really photosynthesize. They are actually breaking down. They break down. They send the food to the baby. That's why. So if you are giving all this, something might happen, but not so much. Compared to you give to the leaf when they are actively growing. When they are actively growing, they are photosynthesizing a lot. They are synthesizing lots of sugar. Yeah. Uh, and this is the same for, for example, for paddy. Yeah. Paddy the leaf. Yeah. Yeah. So in paddy, uh, I think it should be good before. Up, I think up to eight, 80 days after sowing. Yep, 80 days after. Because after, beyond 80 days, uh, the chemicals start to exit, exit it already. Yep. So you have 80 days you can choose. Maybe you want to do one time or you want to do two or three times. That's good. Okay, because petty time, four months, right? Yeah, but for this, this is kind of like a small opening. So um, if it's like five or six weeks, so maybe once every ten days. That 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 makes sense. Yeah, for the okra, yeah, okra is quite fast as well. It can reach this stage, the flowering, the first flowering, around thirty-five days. Yeah, so you might want to start spraying first, maybe ten days after sowing. Yeah, ten days after sowing, and a week after that. Um, I'm, I'm talking this based on the general uh, phenological, morphological appearance for the plants. Okay, it depends on the variety. So do, you, do you So um, the, this stage, if you if you notice, I didn't put any base. Regardless of the varieties, regardless of the species, the stages still happen, but the days are different. That's why there is no days. But the stage always present. Yeah. So the days is only specific for that variety only. Yeah. We 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 we, we call it phenology. Phenology. Yeah, yeah. Phenology. Phenology stands for phenomena. Phenomenon. Phenomenon. Logy is the, the study of. The, yeah, the study, the study of phenomena. The phenomenon of the plant. The phenomenon of what? Phenomenon of vegetative. The phenomenon of uh, stem elongating. The phenomenon of. Uh, floral induction and then associate it with the days after sowing or after transplant. Yeah, some people transplant, some people direct sowing. So it depends on the um, agricultural practice. Yeah. There's no day. Just make sure that you... Uh, this is what we do here. We just grow the plant first. No treatment. We just want to have the day. So we, we, we have the time scale and then we decide, okay, now we have the scale now, let's decide now when to give the treatment. And people do that for every variety. Even even for, for rice, because there are rice which is a uh, short maturity, long maturity. Yeah. So in a good experiment for this, I mean like so you do that sort of like screening stage first where you uh ascertain the the female. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it will make life a lot easier after that, because you can you can target oh because we need, you still need to do the basic fertilizer you don't want it to interfere with your product application, right? So it, it gives you the heads up to plan ahead things, or maybe you want to move around your plant because you want to give it to measure photosynthesis, 
right? So it gives you more power to control things, right? Okay, and finally for this session is, I just want to give uh, again exposure to you about the response of photosynthesis that you get from measuring uh, using whatever machine. It can be influenced by various things. So your phot photoluminescent product is one thing that can have impact on the photosynthesis. There are many other things, okay? Fertilizer, soil condition, in your case is the water, nutrient condition, even the microbes. So this is why the location is important somehow. Um, even though you are using the growth rate, the growth rate you place on the hallway is not going to give the same result with the growth rate um, in, 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 the, in, the, in the office, even though the lighting is the same. Yeah, because what? In the hallway, people walk all the time. You're going to get different microbes, and some microbes can do some something to the plant. Okay, right. And then uh, also the plant factor, the genotype. Uh, again, this is why the variety is very, very special in terms of the days of the stages. Okay, genotype, nutrient status, and hormones, and, and so on. Okay, so all of these things can contribute to what we call as confounding effects. You didn't mean it to happen, but it happened anyway. For example, in the field, this is an issue in the field. You spray the plants with your product, thinking that, okay, something positive is going to happen. It so happens that the plant that you spray is actually in the area of the soil that is high in nitrogen because of the soil fertility, heterogeneity, okay? And you didn't know it. Yeah. People, people uh, in the soil science, they, they know this uh, about, about this soil mapping, okay? And then you got your result, and you're kind of happy about it. <laughs> Is it really due to the product? Yeah. We, we, we actually have this uh, situation when we give the product to farmer. Mm. Uh, meaning that uh, in an organic farm, the way he uh, made up the soil mm. was not consistent. Uh, so, so I, I'm I, even peeling plowing. Uh, uh, okay. mm. So when when I you know tried to figure out what was mm. happening, in the end uh, we knew it was because of that inconsistent mm. uh, content of the. Yep. Yeah. yeah, there 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 are ways to to overcome this, but it's it's very case specific. For rice, just the practice for rice. For 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 the oil palm plantation, oh, that's even a different story. Yeah, yeah, because because the soil is different of different orders. Different soil orders have different stubborn level. I call it stubborn level. Yeah, yeah. Just just to bear them bear in mind. But since you are, if you are most of the time you are growing um indoor, it's lesser. It happens, but at lesser degree. Okay, All right. Okay, all right, okay. That's all I think for the first session. Uh, yeah. you, uh -huh. um, you mentioned, you know, there's photo and then there's synthesis. And our product uh, may be uh, more related to the photo. Yep. Right? Uh, is it correct if I'm, I'm thinking the nutrients and the uptake of nutrients, how the plant uses nutrients, is all part of the synthesis part? Um, uh, if when the photo is <coughs> when your photo is ha healthy and efficient, it will produce more energy. Uh, energy. This energy is needed to run the synthesis. The more of this energy that you have, this the faster the cycle to produce this. Uh, if we're not studying for, uh, uh, photosynthesis enhancer, if we're not studying that, but we're just studying fertilizer. Uh, you can attribute this to actually both. Granular fertilizer can go both. Uh, okay. Yeah, granular fertilizer. Because nit nitrogen, nitrogen, like for example, you study MPK, right? And then you play around with the MPK level. MPK is actually used in this phot photosystem. For the system and also for the enzyme, enzyme in the Kelvin cycle. So it goes both way. Is the enzyme 
Yes, Rubisco and mainly pre pre predominantly Rubisco. Predominantly Rubisco. Yep. For, so for the photosystem, nitrogen is also needed to produce um, chlorophyll. Yes. Because chlorophyll is not alone in the cell. It is bound to protein. Protein needs nitrogen. So chlorophyll, it is present in the cell in the form of LHC, light harvesting complex. You see the word complex, meaning that you have your chlorophyll molecule, it is in the complex, 3D complex. It's never alone. Without this complex, uh, chlorophyll is not functioning. It's, it's just stay there looking green, doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. And this is, oh, again, mixed nitrogen. Yeah. So if granule, it can go both ways, but to a certain degree. Again, we don't want to, to claim grandpa is pregnant. <laughs> but sometimes, but, but sometimes something is like just fundamental knowledge, mm -hmm. right? So what you are sharing here is fundamental knowledge. Yes, so yes, yes. This is. Can I, can I check something else as well? Um, uh, is it correct? Is it well? I, I want to know. Is it well known that if a plant is able to photosynthesize well, it will be able to uptake nutrients more efficiently. Is that well known or not? not no, no. no not the, 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 there, actually, there are many studies with wheat, gandum. High photosynthesis, yield doesn't increase. Missing link. Because there is a concept here. Source, Source sink. The plant has bombastic photosynthesis, the source, but it doesn't go to the sink. Why? Missing link. It could be very reason. Maybe weak uh, vasculature. You see, the plant needs to have a good piping system in the body. We call it the vascular system, the xylem and the phloem. If the, if the leaf is managed to produce um, lots of sugar in the synthesis reaction, but the sugar cannot exit the leaf and go to the sink, to, to, to your uh, fruit, flower, whatever, you're not going to see any improvement in it. So sometimes, um, the, the vascular system is unhealthy. It, it could be many things. Pretty much like, like humans. Sometimes you, you got your artery, you got atherosclerosis, right? You, you're eating all, all the supplement in the Watson, but still, why, why am I in the Watt 3? It's just you, you're not having a healthy vascular system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a missing link. So high photosynthesis does not necessarily mean high yield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, the, the, usually that's what we hope. <clears throat> yeah, if you give a correct um, nutrient, taking care of the plant, automatically usually the vascular system is going to be healthy as well. Yeah, there was there was there was what well, I think I read somewhere. Um, everything looks physically okay, but still the the yield is not improving. The people wonder why. Apparently there is some kind of insect aphid, I think, with the stylet sucking the set out of the, 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 the flow of the plant. So that kind of create pressure imbalance in the plant because this insect sucking up. Yeah, yeah. The plant still look okay. Still look okay. It's, it's just in the middle, uh, there is a toll. Uh, charging all, all this sugar before it reach um, the, the final sink. All right? Okay. All right, so I think that's all for, for this uh, slot. Um, I think we can take a break uh, for 10, 15 minutes before we continue with the chlorophyll and stuff, which is this part, I think. Is it this part? Yeah, start to chloroplast, uh, chloroplast uh, in, in action, all right? Okay, so in the meantime, you can ask a question, okay? I just need to get things uh, ready. Uh, <coughs> I think we can start back at uh, uh, half past 10.
Is, 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 that, is that thing working? Why? Okay, can we uh, continue with the stuff? All good? Okay, all right. <laughs> this, this part, usually I, I, I tell people, brace for impact. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Um, all right. Okay. Good. All right. Good. <coughs> Sorry, my, my my voice is not optimal. I've been talking nonstop the whole week. <laughs> Maybe overlooking. Too much sugar. It's not a good, good thing as well. <coughs> All right. Okay. Um, so let's have a look at um, this. Um, I think we all have learned photosynthesis, but since we are dealing with specific location in the chloroplast to explain um, light in detail, um, I think it's a good it's a good thing. That, that we um, review again the photosynthesis, okay? So, um, in the cell, there are many organelles, okay? You can, you can think of the cell like a factory, and in the factory, there are many divisions, there are many departments, there are many small offices doing various things, but they are still communicating with each other, okay? There are, there are never single alone department in the factory that nobody know you, what you're doing, a lot, right? So, chloroplast can be think of like the manufacturing department. Okay, it receives um, raw outputs, input. Sorry, raw input, raw sources from various locations, from various um, uh, resources, and then they assemble it into a product. Okay, and this is what we call as the anabolic. Uh, process. So if you, if you want to recall for anabolic, catabolic, catabolic. Anabolic means built. Catabolic means break. Okay. So photosynthesis is a highly anabolic uh, uh, process. Okay. It builds up. Okay. <coughs> so like I said earlier, for photosynthesis, you have this um, compartmentalization of biochemical process. Okay, so we divide it into two. We're gonna get it. So this is a chloroplast, and in the chloroplast, we're going to see the the, the detail of the chloroplast later. Two reactions happening namely the light dependent reaction and also the light independent reaction okay for the light dependent reaction the products that you're going to get from this is basically three the atp and adph and also the oxygen and water okay these two are very important for the photosynthesis, which is the ATP and NADPH. What about the oxygen? Well, the oxygen is actually the byproduct. The plant can use it, but the plant only needs very little of it. Much of it is released so that we can still live on this planet. So the product of the light reaction, the ATP and NADPH, is used by the second reaction of the photosynthesis, which is the synthesis reaction. And this is um, popularly known as the Kelvin cycle. Look at the name, it is the cycle. Therefore, it needs to be energized. Okay? Many steps. So, to, to, to further forward in the steps, that requires high amount of energy. Okay? And this is the function of the photo um, reaction. So, um, Supposedly, your product should be enhancing this part of the photosynthesis, okay? So, if something has happened, you should see a high amount of ATP and ADPH and also oxygen being produced, okay? 
we cannot directly measure the amount of ATP and NDPH, but you can see this in the health system of the photosystem. What do you mean? Like the electron transport. Because in, in the light reaction as well, it got compartments. It's not like one place, everything happening in one spot. No, it is actually a compartment from left to right. Sun hits certain parts and then the electron is going to move and it's going to run the whole system. We're going to look at it um, in a bit, um, in, in much detail. Okay? Is that possible to be measured in the lab, for example? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, ATP and ADPH, yes, you, you, you can. There, 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 are, there are methods uh, to do that. Yep. But, you know, sometimes things are very costly. Yeah. Why, why measure the electricity? Just look at the light. Is it on? Is it brighter enough? You know, so, so, um, you, you, you measure the end product of it. The, 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 the health system, it means, because this thing is a journey of electron. Yes. If somehow it is interrupted along the way, ATP and NADPH is not going to happen. So when you say health system, it means just physio, like physical. physical. No, no, no. The, the, the physical of this membrane here. You see, the physical, the, the physical status of the photosystem membrane. How can we check that? Um, with, with, with fluorescence, yeah. Like, like I said, if something happened to this membrane, electron cannot continue the journey. It, it's, it's halted midway. So are you saying that when we are measuring using the Lyco machine, it's actually um, sort of like giving us information about the health system? Right. Yep. Right. Okay. So this is the uh, anatomy of a chloroplast. So this is your regular um, cell looking, looks very busy. And this is the chloroplast, the, the green blobs floating about. So Inside the chloroplast, when you dissect it, you're going to see there are many membranes and there are further subcomponents. Okay, the components that you need to worry about here is this thing, this thylakoid, the disc inside the chloroplast. I call it the um, the pancake. So you have your chloroplast, double membrane, and you have this pancake. And it's actually many, many stack of pancake connected to each other, okay? <clears throat> each of these pancake, we call it thylakoid, thylakoid disc. A stack of this pancake, we call it granum. Okay, when you take one thylakoid disc, you enlarge it, That's a further membrane. So it's a double membrane? Yep. Yep. It, it is two double membrane. Okay. Right. So this is the thylakoid disc. Thylakoid disc. Okay. So this is the membrane. Thylakoid membrane. In the inside of here, we call it lumen. Okay, and finally is the the soup or the surrounding on the inside of the chloroplast. We call it the stroma. Okay, there's a junction here, but that's not very important. We call it a middle lamella. Okay. So what you need to focus now, let's see, is actually here. 
This image here is actually the membrane of the thylakoid, the thylakoid membrane. So this thing, when you further enlarge it, this section here, make it even bigger, you're going to get that. You're going to get this thing here. And this is actually your photo system. Okay. Oh, all right. So let's see what is inside a unit of this photo system. So on, on, on the surface, not only on the surface, in the whole of this membrane, you have this PS. PS stands for photo system. Two photosystem, photosystem two and photosystem one. Historically, this 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 was found first, but biochemically, this is happening first. That's the reason. I don't know why why scientists didn't change it. They, think they could have changed it before Wikipedia was started, but they didn't do it for some reason. Uh -huh. So the energy from the light hitting the leaf you know, penetrating all the layers until here will excite chlorophyll molecule in this photosystem, okay? Look at this green here. This is the thing that I call just now LHC, light harvesting complex, this whole thing here. So in this, in this block of green, there are many pigments, proteins, and, and also associated membrane surrounding it by the side. Okay. When light hits this um, light harvesting complex, it is not triggering photosynthesis right away because the light from the sun or the LED lighting of various wavelengths, various color combination, only one color or one energy level can activate this photosystem, chlorophyll A. And that is in the region of 680 nanometer, which is red. So when you have an island, let's say that I take this region here. In the middle here, you have the special chlorophyll A. It's called P680. Surrounding it, you have many, many other pigments. Many, many, many other pigments. And these other pigments are called the antenna pigment. So what happens is, when the sun comes, the light comes, the energy is usually very high, okay? Let's say that the energy that comes here is about 400 nanometer. This thing is not activated until the energy that it receives is 600 nanometer. So what happens is 400 nanometer is captured by one pigment in the island of the green block. It will be passed to the next pigment, served so, to the next pigment. The, this transfer of energy from one pigment to one pigment will decrease the energy of this wavelength. So for 400, it decreases, it becomes 450 nanometer. Remember, okay, for the lambda, um, long lambda equals low energy. Short lambda or short wavelength, this is wavelength, okay, equals high energy. So when it started out as 400 nanometer and then it gets transferred to the second pigment, the length of the wavelength is going to increase, but the energy is decreasing. It's opposite direction, okay? And then it will keep on passing, keep on passing, keep on passing. Eventually, maybe over here, it, it's become 650 nanometer already worth of energy and the moment it passed here it's already 680 okay so when the energy is correct this p680 is a special chlorophyll molecule special chlorophyll molecule 
and also the the regular name people you see in the in the book is called reaction center or rc it will become excited when it become excited this chlorophyll will eject out electron and of course the electron will want immediately to return to ground, ground state before it can completely to the ground an electron acceptor will catch it and it will go down all the way this electron transport change okay right so this is what happened here you you, you see all this um line of journey yes so they yep. are the filtering system for the energy because when the, 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 the wavelength is um, sent to one pigment to the other, mm -hmm. there's a lot of energy. Yeah, this is sunscreen. Yeah, kind of less sunscreen. You got you. Wait, wait. So what happens? But because between 400 to 700 episodes, we have a green color yeah. um, light. So the pigments here is not only one type, it can be tens of pigments. It can be beta carotene, which is orange. It, it can be anthocyanin, which is purple. There are a plethora of colors in the antenna pigments island. There are many colors. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -mm. Specific energy. Carotene will only absorb specific wavelength that is not absorbed by anthocyanin. But only P680 will uh, produce the electron. Uh, not produce the electron. Has the electron ejected out of its body. Other other pigments, electrons stay in the in the molecule. Yeah. Because chlorophyll A is a that is a special design. The it's kind of like a loose end of it. So the electron can get ejected out and then there's a hole this hole can be refilled in back only for that's why it's called special chlorophyll molecule in this island there are other chlorophyll as well chlorophyll b regular chlorophyll a however the 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 electron is not ejected out they just transport energy what energy uh it's resonance energy this resonance resonance energy um force yeah, i do not know how to pronounce it force resonance energy transfer this was first there fret yeah yeah up there this for, uh, this is energy uh, from the light right the photons yeah okay think of a tuning fork talibuni you bang it against one one surface you can make many many ponds to cause ripples but of course as you go to further ponds the ripples is going to be of less energy but the first pond is the highest ripple vibrating like crazy because what because when you transfer the energy is lost it's gradual but it's still losing and this is very fast super super fast and uh, this is the full name in case if you want to look it up Force their resonance energy transfer. Fret. Yeah. I would like to know the rough size of the LHC because I'm visualizing like our CQD size and this. What is the ratio like? Um, well, that's actually very, very small. Um, uh, I, would see, I would see that a final part is um, microns in size. That's chloroplast, this thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Chloroplast. Okay, I, I'll give you a perspective. A cell, plant cell, usually it's about um, 15 micrometer in length. And then you have your um, chloroplast. That is usually one to two micrometer. Micrometer. And this is, I don't know, that's even smaller. Yeah, there, there is a literature for, for that. Um, actually, maybe there's an emission here. I don't, I don't remember the exact value of it. Because 
some plants they have bigger chloroplasts some they have smaller chloroplasts yeah even chloroplasts have variants not only Honda CD perfect of as well yeah <coughs> 400,000 plant species of course they, they are going to differ from each other okay all right <clears throat> so this thing gets activated the electron acceptor the first one feel fighting feel feel fighting get transferred and all the way down like explained in here okay and then it will be captured by the PS1, photosystem 1, which is this guy here. And this PS1 also have a special chlorophyll molecule, but it's called P700 because it will be only activated by 700 nanometer worth of energy value. Okay, And at the end of the day, that's how you get all this ATP. <coughs> I don't think I should be explaining too much how this thing because that's that's um, all you want to know how the ATP get produced. Not not important. Not important. Not important. <coughs> um, that's a repeat of image because um, this is not clear. Uh, but I just want to give you the perspective of how long this is all taking place. Um, micro microseconds. Okay. The moment the light comes and then they are passing about, you have all this um, transfer of energy. Again, if this, this, this system is not healthy, um, then there is an interruption of electron flow. And this is the concept used by a weak scientist. You know, herbicide killer of the um, Rachel Rumpai song, Kimoto? They use special certain chemicals to interrupt electron flow. Some chemicals can have impact on this cycle from B6F. Just this one. They, they, don't, they don't have to kill the whole system. That's very expensive. Just, just use one chemical to kill it. Electron flow cannot move. There is no ATP and ATPH. There's no sugar eventually. Uh, what is the light like for reading reflect? Uh, is it like a reduced number? Or... Um, so for, for, for your training here, um, you're going to see the ability of the photosystem to capture the light. How much is it able to capture the light? And then how much of this light energy is passed through this side? Because not all light captured by the leaf is used for photochemistry. Some is lost as heat. Some is transferred to other structure in the plant. There are many other structures. So you're going to see that. So um, it's called the FVFM. Okay, this is the max maximum quantum um, quantum. Quantum yield. This depends on the textbook actually. And then there's a, another 5 PS2. After this guy has captured, how much is actually running the photosynthesis? So that's what you're going to get. So meaning that whenever you have a reading, uh, sorry, whenever you take a reading mm. of a damaged system, mm. you, uh, the only way to uh, assess whether it's damaged or not, or not healthy, is to compare it to the control which is hopefully healthy. That's the only way to mm -hmm. decide. Stress, that. stress plan in any way will have the LVFM reduced. LVFM, I'll just wait right here. LVFM, usually the value is around 0 0.8. Meaning that 80% of the light coming towards the leaf is absorbed into the cell into the chloroplast, just absorb, okay, not utilize yet. Utilize is the story of 5 PS2. So when you have it slightly less, even slightly less, 0 0.77, stress. This is not efficient because this, this, this number, this value is highly conserved. 
you, it's not easy to change this. Can, can that number increase? But can, but maybe maybe 8.3, 8.4, you're not going to see suddenly 8.9, no. Is there a relationship between yeah. Uh, if it is, if it's not if it cannot capture, how is it going to utilize? This is capturing. This is cap utilizing. Capturing, capturing light energy. Five PS two utilizing light energy. Utilizing for what? For photochemistry. So the what happened to the twenty percent? It is released as the heat to surrounding, and because the number of photosystem is limited for a given chloroplast, you only have so much of this system in a given cells. Plus, these things are stacking. Some are exposed, some are partially exposed. Okay, so um. That's a lot the plant can need to handle in one time. This is only one. There are some, maybe millions or billions for in one chloroplast. So the fact that they can handle eighty percent every single microsecond that's kind of impressive. Yeah. Plus, there is a wear and tear. This is high energy. The membrane is going to be compromised over the time so it, it needs repair so during the repair it, it, it cannot perform well yeah so um but the plant is, 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 is very efficient in this it just repair and it can go on over and over and over again right okay so um yeah so the avfm you capture and the phi ps2 is the efficiency of it how much is managed to go further the electron transport here? If your system is not healthy, all the captured energy stay in the internal pigment region. They are not going anywhere. They cannot further to the electron transfer. Okay? <clears throat> right. Yeah. Okay. And this whole thing, it's called the Z scheme or the z scheme if you are uh, uh, american okay so there's a light light excites the uh chlorophyll p680 and then it will go down i'm talking about energy now okay the electron go down and then it, it will excite the p700 and then it will go down again okay? so you have this zigzag motion of energy yeah Measure what? Uh, the uh, it, it, it can measure this, 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 this other end of it. The, the, uh, in the form of co uh, coefficient. How many percentage have uh, further into certain direction? It, um, it, when you are dealing with fluorescence, many things do not have units, dimensionless. The concept it, this thing works is it knows how much it gives and then it receives back the signal to see what is used or what is lost what is missing in the equation so that's why it doesn't have any unit oh that tells me it, it, I, I, can you check this thing every fm is chlorophyll fluorescence yeah this is this is fluorescence when i checked i checked when the when when the when when the energy um, is captured eighty percent, what happened to the remaining twenty percent? That I said loss. Yeah. That is fluorescence. Fluorescence means glow in the dark. Uh, yes, it's, yes. It's, it's glowing. So so uh, so I I I think you are missing a point. VFM is not that fluorescence which is lost. It's not. No. It is the uh, it is captured. Yeah, it capture it. The, the amount of light which has been captured. Capture. Yeah. So what happened in 0.2 that is not captured? It glows. Fluorescence and heat. 
Ya. So, I I tak boleh guna salah faham. Dia ingat FDFM tu adalah fluorescence is not. Okay. I can show kejap lagi. Uh, what what is meant by FDFM ni? FDFM ni. That's that that's that. I think I can show you now. Uh, even though the slide is in a bit, I'll just show you now. What is meant by FDFM? Um. I think we can skip here. Yeah, this diagram here. <coughs> um, I just wrap this again. F stands for fluorescence. You have the leaf. We have the leaf here of uh, two, three plants here. When the leaf is in the dark for quite some time, it's, it's not producing any fluorescence. Fluorescence simply means... Um, if you're not familiar with the concept, um, yeah. You know the, the analog uh, watch in the past, if you go to the dark, it can still glow. That's a form of fluorescence as well, but it's called phosphorescence because there is a delayed release of energy back to the environment. The difference with fluorescence is Fluorescence is immediate release. The molecule absorbs energy, it gets excited, and immediately go down to the ground state. Microseconds. That is fluorescence. However, if it takes a sweet time, three, four hours to gradually give off the energy, that is phosphorescence. That is used in the you know, if you go to disco party sticks, the, the watch on the, the dial that looks green, the exit sign, that thing, and not, oh, that thing has got, got uh, actual electricity on it. Yeah, that is phosphorescence. Okay? <clears throat> because if, what, if the MVFM is 100%, the planet is not glowing at all. Why is it not glowing? It uses the energy 100%. But nature is not perfect. Right? Okay, um, I'll, just, I'll just show you. Um, when the plant is in the dark, it's not fluorescing at all. All energy has been used, it just stay dormant. So it's nothing happening with the fluorescence uh, receiver. But when you turn on the measuring beam, Measuring, measuring beam. I'm talking about the Lyco now, okay? In the Lyco, there are many lights in the chamber. One of the light is called measuring beam. This measuring beam is enough to trigger fluorescent signals, but it's not enough to run photosynthesis. So it will cause the plant to glow continuously meaning that the energy just up to this point it never goes to the electron transport chain it managed to make all these things to glow and after it has become stabilized you give it a saturating flash the signal will go up okay at the peak here, so saturating flash here, saturating flash, the value is about 8,000 micromole and more. The value here is very low, maybe 0 0.025 micromole. It is still light, but light that cannot do photosynthesis. So coming back to here, so given a, give, by giving a sudden saturating flash to the dark adapted leaf, you will get this maximum fluorescence, FM. Okay? And then, of course, the signal will start to come down back again. So you will have another fluorescence here. Why it doesn't come back to the original state? Beca because um, some of the reaction center, they are, they are still not releasing the signals, the, the energy. They are still keeping the energy, hence the difference. So whatever difference in here, between FM here and also F0 here, this is F 
M. Oh, sorry, FV. Variable fluorescence. So by taking into account this thing, that's why you get FV, FM. The difference between F maximum fluorescence minus the original fluorescence over maximum fluorescence. So you get the value around 0 0.8. Uh, may I ask a question? Uh, so, from Marina's data, uh, we see that the 5PS2 is increased when there is photosynthesis enhancement. But FVFM roughly around 0.8. So I'm thinking, initially, I thought if you have the photosynthesis enhancer, FVFM will increase as well as 5PS2 will increase. But it seems that that's not, 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 not necessarily. Not necessarily. Ah, so I want to understand that. Not, not, nece not necessarily. Um, yeah. like, like I said, it could be your quantum dots actually, they don't go, okay, they go somewhere else. They go. They don't go directly to affect this capturing of the um, photon. They they actually indirectly helping the utilizing of the photon. Helping, uh, yeah. So uh, capturing might be similar, but the utilizing mm -hmm. is different. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yep. Utilizing. The, the utilization of yep. the light has improved. The capturing roughly the same, yeah. but the utilizing in the photochemistry has improved. Yeah. This one is, I mean, this one is biochemistry of CPDC, right? It, it, it actually helps. Oh, well, there are many the theories. Uh, yes, but electron transport, I mean, uh, uh, it can, uh, uh, in, 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 in the current literature, there's not really this explanation about that improvement in the 5S2. It just say, ah, helps with the electron transport mechanism. Yes, yes, Very so general. Yeah. You know, but how how it how? Yes. So because initially I thought that LVFM was improved, but it seems that maybe not for some for other plants. Maybe the one who wrote the, the literature is not plant physiologist. <laughs> <laughs> This is a mechanism. <coughs> there is um actually you can know more about this. There is a guy in UCL London. I think his name is Ruben. Ruben, some some I met him a long time ago. He he should have a lot of literature about this. He did a lot of experiment with the fluorescence, the capturing, the utilizing. Ruben, somewhere in, in London, I think UCL. Maybe we can put his work. Yeah, yeah, Ruben. Ruben, I'll I don't know if his name is Ruben. Yeah. This is from a paper as well, from Murchi. He, he explained it. Murchi was my, my uh, Viva examiner. Yeah, so you can imagine how, far, how horrific my Viva was. That's the reason why you can explain today. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's a post expert. Yeah. 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 Actually, actually he, he, uh, Murchi is very nice, very soft spoken. The, the other professor was, 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 was a monster. The other one, the other one. He was so, he was so nice. Um, um, okay, so um, I think this is a bit uh, too forward. I just want to explain actually first what, what is the fluorescence um, in general. So this is, this is the concept of it actually. So you have energy coming in the form of light to the reaction center of the thylakoid membrane. Remember, thylakoid membrane, there are many islands of light harvesting complex. There are many. Each of them receiving light, whether it can be sunlight or LED, doesn't matter. And then it's going to excite the reaction center, the special chlorophyll A. This excitation now can have three fates. Excitation of P680 can have three fates now. The fate. Where the electron, the excited electron can go. It can either go through photochemistry, chemistry, meaning that it proceeds to the electron transport chain, or it can proceed to in the form of 
uh, heat in the LECO, it's defined as uh, non photochemical quenching and PQ, or it can proceed in the form of fluorescence. Flores. It fluoresces, it just glows. It just glows. So, three phase, yes. This is why her, her diagram is incorrect because. She, uh, uh -huh. So she's saying she wants to explain this partitioning. So she's saying uh, uh, FVFM is the fluorescence, and then you have that heat, uh -huh. and then she's saying the other one is the photochemical five plus two. Ah, salakan. Ah, ke depan sikit. Tak betul tu. Yeah, now I understand. I I already know. No, uh, actually. This thing is physics, quantum physics. Okay, I'm sure the physiologists who tried to create this machine, they cried as well <laughs> to, 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 to do all of these things. Um, it's, it's because um, you need to, uh, because you cannot see the light, all this energy. You need to imagine things a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, how, how do I know? I got uh, 10 years ago. I got to talk uh, to a theoretical physicist explaining to me about because there was a going to be a Nobel Prize ceremony of somebody found Higgs boson. If you know what Higgs boson is, Higgs boson is the particle in the universe that giving you matter weight. And there's a story of the photon as well. So maybe that's why I, I understood it a bit. I didn't read journal. <laughs> Couldn't understand a word. <laughs> Couldn't understand a word. <clears throat> Okay, so this is the fate. If the elect excited electron go down the fate of photochemistry, electron transport will be running. Eventually, you will get ATP and ATPH and everything. But if you go down the heat, you will get heat. But if you got fluorescence, uh, this is the one that the machine measures. How much is glowing? Because the one that is glowing is not contributing to photosynthesis. That's why every FM 0 0.8, if it slightly go down, there, there is an instability somewhere. Because this value is highly conserved. Is it easy for you to uh, clarify? Because I don't know if this is a valid question or not. My question is, what is the relationship between fluorescence and FVFM? FVFM is a ratio, a ratio of fluorescence in different states. FM is the maximum fluorescence happening to the plant when saturating light is given. Saturating light, think of tengah hari, tuaf noon, super saturating. The FV is the variable, the, bit, the difference between maximum fluorescence that can be happening to the plant with the basic fluorescence that the plant gives off. The plant fluoresce all the time. It's, it's, it's fluorescing provided there is a minimum amount of light. So this FVFM is actually the ratio, just a ratio. Yeah. So when you put this everything into perspective here, that's why we know 80% has been captured. 20% has gone. Gone when? I don't know. He's too. A hit, 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 hit. <clears throat> Usually heat is negligible. That's the reason. Because um, heat, uh, uh, the leaf system is water. So heat. Well, that's not so much, so much, so much, but it can glow, right? Okay, right. Yeah. So this is to to show you the concept of open and closed reaction center. Remember, I was talking about the hole created when it gets excited. So there is a light, and the light moves. So it, can you see all this a circle? These are pigments, island of pigment. You know, if I if 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 I created this diagram, this should be colorful, not only green. It should be orange, blue, grey, brown, whole rainbow. Yes, yes, I should. In two thousand two, they, they might not be here anymore. 
So this is passing around right to the middle. Who's in the middle here? P six eight zero. If it gets excited, electron is ejected out. That's why you get a hole here. There's a hole here. Okay. So that hole, if the um, the coming electron fill it out, it will be closed again. Okay. So um, this is another way to say oh. It's, it's already uh, shown here. This is from uh, the Mochi paper as well. All right. So this is your LHC, light harvesting complex antenna. And this here, the, grid, the white bits here, this is your electron transport. So FVFM only deals with this part. Yeah. Maximum quantum yield. Okay. It is still not utilizing. The moment some of it managed to go further this boundary and then go down this electron transport chain that is photosystem efficiency the five phase yeah because the moment it goes down it goes down like waterfall nobody can stop it it just go unless there is a weak scientist spray it with herbicide then only it will stop right and right at the end you will get your energy and this energy will be transported nearby to the Kelvin cycle and then the Kelvin cycle can turn. Yeah, <coughs> again, okay, so, oh, sorry. Uh, you can get the paper. Don't, don't feel bad if you, if you cannot grasp it this whole time. I have, I have a bunch of students, so many years, I do not know why people cannot understand this. <laughs> Capturing of photon. Capturing of photon. Sunlight gives you 10,000 molecules of uh, photon. 10,000 light particles. Your leaf only captured 8,000 light particles. So your NVFM is 80%. 20% is not used. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, 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 the confusion is uh, relating NVFM Two fluorescence, which is not used. I think that's the. LVFM is is is, is, is the ratio is of two states of fluorescence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe I know you have explained this before, but uh, and I've seen this image because I tried myself to understand it, but still, how? Dapat dapat nanti nanti. Mungkin lepas ni kita pergi jabatan fizik. There are many physicists in EPM. And this is their, their food and lunch. I'm not a physicist. <laughs> yeah. But it's good to know because um, light is one of the ingredients in agriculture. So, right. Okay. So, um, yeah. Um, so, this is what we're going to do with the demonstration. Just um, in a bit. Uh, okay. Right. So the first part of the demonstration here will involve with getting FVFM, right? And then we will immediately continue with the light response curve because the light response curve, which has the prior FVFM, will automatically produce in this as well. Automatically, you're going to get it. it yep. Provided, don't stop. You continue. The machine knows, oh, you want this. Okay, um, so meaning that you are going to deal just this side and this side only. FVFM side and also 5PS2 side. 5PS2 means the leaf is light adapted. The FVFM, it is dark adapted. Okay, dark adapted means reaction center fully open every everything got holes all the reaction center got holes the light adapted means reaction center closed they are occupied but just because they are occupied doesn't mean that they cannot do photosynthesis because some reaction center because they are super healthy they can open and close very fast in, in in a given milliseconds. Okay. Uh, 
FVFM is the capturing of light. Mm -mm. Uh, around 80% is captured, the 20% is fluorescence and heat. Mm -mm. Uh, so, is all of that which is captured is utilized? So, how, how, so what happens to the unutilized one? The utilized, I understand, it goes through the... Again, will it just be MPQ? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it, can, it, it is not utilized or it is um, delayed response. Oh, okay. Remember this thing can be passed around? It's a membrane. It's a membrane. It can be passed around. Then when it comes back, it can run again the process. So this is the concept which I kind of miss here. I want to show you here this thing. This thing. This concept here. It's called, oh, it's not big. I'll make it bigger. Uh... Cyclic photophosphorylation. So this is the Z scheme that you sh uh, saw earlier. It gets excited, it goes down, gets excited again, go down, it forms the Z movement of the electron. But there is another pattern of electron movement. It's called the cyclic in here, meaning that from the photosystem one, it can the electron can jump straight to the electron transport. And then it goes down the, the path again. Yeah. So the reason the plant is having all of this to increase the production of ATP. Because in, in Kelvin cycle, it uses more ATP than NADPH. By having this cyclic electron flow, the plant can have more ATP production happening. Right? Yeah. So to answer your question earlier, what happens to the one that is not utilized yet? At that moment, they are being passing around. Can yeah. Can yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Recycle using this path here, the cyclic electron flow. I think I said this to Yamuna sometime ago. <laughs> She's getting there. She's getting there. <laughs> getting there. Getting there. <laughs> All right. Okay. Like this. Okay. Um, so these are all the parameters uh, possible with the fluorescence uh, experiment. Okay. The one that we're dealing with only this, this LVFM, and also the five PS two. Don't don't get scared and be confused. Okay. There are many synonyms. This is what I want to highlight. There are many synonyms depending on the mode of the writer. There are there are, there are many synonyms. Synonyms of the symbols and also the parameters abbreviation. For example, like this one here. I mean, let me make it bigger. <clears throat> In the form of parameter uh, ratio, it is called LVFM. But this is the, the formula. So this is equivalent to this. Just a different way of, of writing that. 5PS2 is actually the delta fluorescence over delta fluorescence in maximum lighting. So they write it differently, but they are actually talking to the same thing. I, I, I've seen many uh, fluorescence journal, they kind of use this as they feel like it without clarifying to the reader, this is the system that they are using, which is, I, I think, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's pretty much like um, watermelon, right? You call it in English watermelon. Yeah, you, 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 you go to his village, you call it Chikwa. You, you go to Kelantan, they call it Ah, Timotina. You, you go to Jakarta, they call it Semangka. You call, you go to the Rome, 1000 years ago, they call it Citrullus Lanatus. <laughs> But they are referring to the same thing. Tembikai. <laughs> right. So it's pretty much the same story here. Okay. There, there is no standardization. I, I think they will standardize this if there are too many people dealing with this. It will, they will standardize it. Now it, dep it depends on the mood of the writer. Yeah. I, maybe I can create my, my, my own symbol. Put Pikachu head one. <laughs> right. that, that means uh, maximum fluorescence. Okay, uh, let's see. Go down here. 
Yeah. Okay. So I just want to explain a bit more about the FVFM. So this is the formula which is I've explained here. Okay. So FFM maximum process minus the not F not here. Okay. So you can get it. Yeah. Sometimes you can get it. It point zero point eight five, but not really in plants. I mean, maybe in my microalgae and stuff. Um, some people, they, they have bioreactor, they study uh, algae, algae photosynthesizing as well. Yeah, but is it the water and then the light transmission is really it, We are talking, uh, remember, the plants do not care about the light, it cares about the energy. As right. long the energy is correct, somebody will get excited and do the work. Yeah. Intensity. No, 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 no. Intensity is the number of photons per given area. If the photons of the wrong energy content, nothing going to happen as well. Yeah. So that's why in the earliest light, I mentioned about the three qualities of light. Light quantity, light quality, and also light period, photo period of it. Right? Okay. So, um, yeah, so this is the uh, um, FVFM, uh, if I explain it, so that should be clear now. So these are the some examples from the literature, how people present the result uh, for the FVFM, just FVFM from the literature. So you can uh, quantify it using various organisms, not only terrestrial plant. It can be LG, uh, uh, spiral, spirulina, the cyanobacteria. People study that heavily as well because that people use that for, for supplement, right? Yeah. So that there are many ways to, to present it. You can see uh, during the time of the day, the LVFM is not consistent. Yeah. So this is very, very important in the metric methods. You need to specify the time that you use for the LVFM. Yeah. And I think that uh, the dark adapter and the light adapter is very important, but I don't know. <laughs> dark adapter to the, the reason we do it to fully open reaction center light adapted light adapter to make all the reaction center busy and actively working close how how quickly when you are busy you are still catering for your crying child can you multitasking think of it that way it's, it's in the full sunlight. You're already busy. Yes. And then there's, there's some more light coming. Uh -huh. How do you deal with it? If the plant is healthy uh -huh. and very, very efficient, uh -huh. it, it can deal with this light. If it cannot deal with it, it will pass around. Come back later. So, 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 so if it can in a healthy and it's healthy, mm. it can deal with it because say there's CQD. Mm. Passing around. Extra light. Mm. So it, and it can deal with it. Yep. What does it do? Um, what, you, what does you, it mean if it can deal with it? If it can deal with it, you will get more ATP and ADP. Oh. Meaning that more photochemistry happening. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what I understood. Lah. Yeah. Okay, so it's lah. Yeah. It, it, it's, 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 it's like uh, some moms are super multitasking, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's still cooking, talking to the auntie next door, and then the kids are crying, and then the husband coming back. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh, where, who, who to entertain first? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's something like uh, we can say that CQD acts like the reaction center. Uh, no. you, you, can, you can propose mechanism of CQD as, as the um, sub, sub, supplement. Oh, yeah. Let me think. Why, why you say it's reaction center? Is it because it fluoresces? Uh, because uh, under the light adapter, yeah. usually in the light adapter, you have <coughs> The, the the requirement to become a reaction center is it must be able to get excited and go down. Does it? Uh, yeah, so maybe that's what uh, Dr. Sari is saying because it has similar properties which is it, it is photoluminescent. Uh, because all the other antennas, mm. they're not photoluminescent. Mm. But CQD is photoluminescent. So I, I think that is what Dr. Sari is saying. Mm. Could be? What, what? Possibly. Possibly. If you if you can prove it, if you can prove 
it using photoluminescence analysis this thing yeah prove it this if you can prove it this you can make a claim it's a reaction center uh, but, but, but in my opinion it is not like the other antennas but it flores it, it, it other antenna passing around yeah other antenna passing around but this cqd it all it has that ability to flores but the energy will still be too high for the P680 and mm. the P700. So it will pass around until the energy is enough for the reaction center to be kept, to capture. To capture and get excited. Uh, 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 to, get, to be kept. To yeah, capture so how is that happening? This is another question. Uh, I think it's the same phenomena like the antenna. Um, so it's not, it's not like it's not like a reaction center where you have the P680 and the P700, but it does uh, experience the fluorescence. The energy or the electron dropping down will be passed around and then until it reaches 680 and 700. Sounds and like your CKD is having a properties of delayed luminescence. Delayed luminescence, you can make a claim it is actually phosphorescence. Phosphorus, phosphorus material. The energy is giving off at delayed time to the point this can be used by the plant bila dia dah ready. Yeah, yeah. Bila dia dah bila cakap sis eighty yang sebenarnya. Yep, 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 yep. Eighty dah dulu. Yep. There are many different kind of luminescence phenomenon. Chemical hmm. luminescence, yeah. photoluminescence, bioluminescence. Bioluminescence like the the um, jellyfish blue in the ocean. That's bioluminescence. Yeah. And many of them is, is actually using the phosphorescence. Phosphorus memang biru. But that's why it, it looks blue. You know? No, no. It's not grandma ghost coming to you. It's just floating jellyfish in the ocean. <laughs> blue. Uh, also, uh, Dr. Nazmin, with the light pole, we are actually measuring what's happening within the leaf because we are clipping the leaf and there's light going in. So, mm. uh, can we also, uh, if this, but now the CQD is inside the leaf, if the CQD was inside, say, a polymer film, mm. can we still use the light bulb? For FVFM, yes. For FVFM, yes. But not for PS2. Uh -huh. So, but PS2, you need to involve a light, photosynthesis, and so on. Uh -huh. FVFM, you don't need to prep for the gas exchange. You can go straight, lock, measure. So, are we saying that if we wanted to understand more about the role of CQD in uh, the leaf, we can actually... You can use that leaf even. Uh, so, we can actually study that film and to see what's happening not with, without the photo system. Mm. Right? And it will shed more light into... Mm. I mean, it will shed more because the, the, the concept it works is, it's called PAM, uh, Pulse uh, Amplitude Modulation. The machine knows how much it gives, uh -huh. how much it receives back, or uh -huh. how much is lost to the site. Yeah. It, it knows. So, 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 just now you were saying that uh, CQD movie is a detection center. Uh, I think that we can check whether or not <coughs> I've I've done something while I was in in the US, um, um, undergoing uh, training with Lyco. While everybody was finding plants to test it, you know, it was it was um, fasting my Ramadan. I didn't want to go outside because it's super hot, forty degree. Oh, when was it? What year? And what? Was it summer? Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. So you know what I did? Because we were studying fluorescence, I just took the money. I just clip it in there because the money, some money fluoresce. Uh -uh. Now we got the signal. <laughs> <laughs> So they're like, oh, okay, okay, you, you, you are somebody being able to think that way. <laughs> yeah, because some, some money uh, to, 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 uh, to prevent counterfeit, they, uh, they, put, they put some kind of uh, minerals or something on the surface. Yes. Yeah, so it, it flores. Yeah, and then the machine detects it. Oh, it, it does fluoresce. And it's not, 
that's why I say you can do it even for the deadlift just for the FBFM okay not for this this you need a proper photosynthesis yeah because the polymer utilizing for what yeah. it, it has absorbed and it lets off some the one that it has been absorbed is doing what so that is for living thing only living thing can get the, take the money and go to shopping <laughs> if you if you get the money give to grandma in casket nothing gonna happen she can hold it for 100 years you know holding it tight she's not utilizing something like that something like that all right okay <laughs> okay so um let's move on with this so that's that that's the uh some so um that's the just a fluorescence uh, reading of the FVFM as well at different time. And you can see this is another way to quantify it. QP, photochemical quenching, and also the um, QN, right? The um, heat stuff. So you're going to get these two, FVFM and also the delta FFM prime. That is the 5PS2. Yes? Photo, photochemical uh, uh, quenching coefficient, meaning that how many percentage go to other direction instead of go to photochemistry. That is a very a bit long experiment because you need to give a special light, which this thing got as well. You need to give a dark pulse. Q stands for quenching. Quenching means you eliminate the thirst of it. Ah. So, um, yeah, so um, you understand this, and then 5PS2 is actually the maximum efficiency of PS2 in the light if all the centers were open. Yep, centers of what? The reaction center, the one with the holes and the one without the holes. Remember in the, in the earlier slide? Yeah. So uh, this is just the summary uh, of the expected value you're going to get. You can get 0 0.7. Some plants can have 0 0.7. Yeah, it depends on the species. But it's, it's highly conserved. Yeah. Uh, some uh, example. Uh, I think you can get all of this from the literature. So you, you can see that this literature deals with only two measurements. The FVFM and also the 5PS2. The effects of uh, um, nutrients. Uh, on these uh, parameters, the copper, the zinc, and then they see what happens um, to, to, to the plant. Simple experiment, but um, doable. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. So is that equal to 5PS2? Yeah. Oh, okay. so yeah. Synonym, synonym, synonym. That that to show you the formula actually the delta F though. Yeah, that's the formula. And to understand the, the the formula how it's calculated, you need to refer back to this. Who is F? Who is F prime? The moment it says it put prime, the apostrophe it means light adapted. <clears throat> no prime, no sign means that dark adapted. That's the convention people use. Okay, and uh, another example. Uh, so this paper used the electron transport rate and also the NPQ, the quenching for, for this for this side of it. All right, um, I think uh, that's pretty much, yeah, this is pretty much uh, the example of this, okay? And finally, you want to do the lat response curve. Okay, so this you do immediately after you have done the FVFM. So light response curve, this thing, um, we give, we take the measurements of the photosynthesis at different light intensity. Okay, so hopefully with the um, the exercise that you're going to do, you're going to get this. These phases, <coughs> whenever you're dealing with the curve. Uh, you can, the curve got face, okay? 
when the curve is something like that, we call it the curve is having triphasic. Triphasic curve. Phase one, phase two, phase three. There are many, many kind of curves in, in nature, okay? This is uh, one of them that you're going to get with the light intensity. Okay, so what do you get from the light curve? So these four, in essence, you get the dark respiration rate, meaning that when there is no light, how much your plant is respiring? Meaning that now is the activity of the mitochondria. Because when you turn off the light, chloroplast is not active. So, but the CO2 is increasing. Whose, whose fault is it? That's the mitochondria action, which you can get from this as well. And then you're going to get the light compensation point, meaning that the, the amount of light, when you give to the leaf, CO2 intake and CO2 released by the plant at balance net. The plant uses up CO2 for photosynthesis. The plant also release CO2 due to the cellular respiration. There is one point of light which this in CO2 and out CO2 is balanced. That is called, called light compensation point, which you can get from this curve as well. And the third thing is you get the quantum efficiency, which is the slope of this thing. Meaning that um, it's just a slope, meaning that for one, for one unit of absorbed light, how many units of carbon is assimilated? Efficiency of it. If your plant is super healthy, you're going to get more of it. Huh? Okay, and, and finally, is the saturation, light, sat light saturated photosynthesis, meaning that for this given leaf, what is the maximum photosynthesis or assimilation that is able to be done? Yeah, and this can vary from plant to plant. And even if you put treatment, even more. Four things. Is it correct if we um, hypothesize that uh, the light, the, the, the light <coughs> compensation point mm -hmm. for control plant and for CKD treated plant will be different? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So, how will it move on the light response curve? Uh, the point it it, it can go towards the right um uh, to the left skewed to the left which is left yeah right. yeah, 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 left. yeah 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 sometimes it's not due to the treatment sometimes it's due to the species if you compare uh, rice and um uh, jago maize it will be different, yeah, it will, it will be different. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So in this case, uh, it will move. Through. If your CQD got any effects, yeah. this 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 is going to be interesting yes. because it's like oh, slight light uh -huh. is enough to trigger photosynthesis abruptly. Uh -huh. yeah. um, we have some data, um, but somehow it was cut down. What? When I say it's skewed to the left, uh -huh. it means that minimum light is required to balance the CO2 intake and uptake, meaning that your plant is efficient. It's efficient. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah. So this is how you, you explain the triphasic of the curve. So this is the maximum quantum, which is this guy here, quantum efficiency. And then you have your light saturation, which is the maximum. But if you further increase the light, nothing good going to happen to the plant. It's going to decline the photosynthesis. And this is the region that we call photo inhibition. And these are the, the data, real data, that you can get, which you can get in a bit. Okay, You get the amount of light that you give to the plant, which you can set using the machine. I, I means incidence, incidence light, and then the photosynthesis, the assimilation of it. How is it going to look like? So it's going to be useful when you plot this light curve on the same um, graph figure like this and then look at the difference like this. This is the plant at um, different setting, at uh, different temperature. You can see that some plants do well when it's cooler, some doing well when it's warmer and stuff, right? As the 
uh, in light intensity increases because in nature light never consistent you go out suddenly it look very nice you want to talk to your friend wait another half an hour you want to slap your friend it's, it's just getting hotter why should i be nice to you all right okay and yes i'm going to get your light compensation point yeah we notice that if we use very high concentration of CBD, mm. then uh, the plant will suffer. So it's either it's suffering because of stress, or could it be that some photoinhibition is happening because there is excessive light? Did you did you check the pH of the spray CBD? Yes. If 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 sometimes sometimes pH and EC reading can interfere yeah. Yeah. with with but with all of this everything is the same we have control plant is okay uh, and then the the cqd is even better but a high concentration of cqd is not necessarily better mm. uh, so is it uh, can i explain it because there's maybe too much light the plant is stressed um, you need to substantiate the claim, which you can use either thermocouple because if it's too much light, yeah. the temperature of the leaf will increase. Uh, can you see it? Thermo, I mean, thermo camera. From the, from the, uh, thermo camera. Maybe, yeah, or thermocouple. That's a sensor. Oh, so leaf it's temperature. It's sensitive enough to detect that. Oh, interesting. Leaf temperature. Mm. Oh. So, um, <laughs> the easiest is to use thermal camera. Lah. Thermal camera. Highly concentrated uh, CQD dengan low concentration. Tapi kita try uh, well, now that you know stuff, maybe you want to re redo again? Yeah. 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 Fair warning of using thermal camera. You need to pay attention to the surrounding and background because that can interfere with the signal. So don't have something metals like that near your plant because they're kind of bouncing off with all this uh, infrared energy. Use the light bulb, so we will get that sort of reading. Um, yes. For light. Yep. Yep. Substantiate that with the temperature yeah. or the light curve. Yeah. If it goes down, photo inhibition. This can be used to claim yeah. photo inhibition has happened. Okay. Yep. <coughs> Jarang jadi, tapi kalau jadi, that's a good thing, lah. Good thing for you. Uh, high up a. Uh, too much of a good thing actually weighing you down right okay and finally i just to show you the different kind of curve okay that you're going to get um while doing this biological experiment all right all right okay i, I think that's all um uh, for now um i think we can prep the plan what time is it 11 56 um what time are we going to check uh, we can use this monstera so these plants have been adapted since last night. So, um, take a did you take a foil? Did you wrap it with a foil leaf? Okay. So this is very special monstera. It's carbon tax monstera. <laughs> 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 Okay, um, is there any question or we can um, go straight to that? Uh, five minutes, I just want to get I, things. I, I, I didn't know that um, you wrapped it so that it was that adapted. That's for that, that adaption. You, 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 you wrap, wrap the, the leaf itself with the foil and then the whole plant cover it with garbage bag. But there's one leaf which is not duct bag, is it? Um, just one leaf that adapted. So give them this uh, so that um, we can see how it's done. <clears throat> okay.
Yes. Yeah. That's a different setting for it. Um. Okay. Come this way. Yeah. So let's uh, open the plan. Uh, tapo, this is for for exercise. Um. At least, don't don't be afraid to make it completely dark because this kind of um indirect lighting is not going to cause the plant to uh, photosynthesize. Obviously, don't use this. Because it's... Underdeveloped, underexpanding. <laughs> Actually, can you belajar botan ni, benda ni? Number one, uh. this thing uh. is not um, flattened out lagi because the morphological nature of this leaf adalah macam ni. Yes, tapi ini baru. No, 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 it's not baru. Um, the chloroplast still underdeveloped. Macam ni? Chloroplast underdeveloped. Look at the color. Tapi memang macam tu pun mesti lah. Nanti dia underdeveloped. Uh, no, 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 no. This, this is still what we call as um, etiolated phase. The the chloroplast needs a bit time untuk uh, mature. Uh -uh. And the leaves, the, the fringes of the leaves hmm. are drooping. So that's a sign. Yeah. Organelles are still not maturing. I know, I know, but what I'm saying is, yes, for today kita tak nak measure ni lah. Memang tak boleh pun. Okay, tapi you what you're not saying that this is a sick plant. That's not what you're saying. Not a sick plant. Not a plant to photo to measure to photosynthesis. Measure. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If you use this, the photosynthesis will be underestimated. Uh -huh. So, the sign of this plant, number one, yep. it is ready yep. after fully uh, expanded. Yep. You look, it's, it's sturdy. Uh -huh. It's completely flat out. Yes. When it's completely flat out, you know that the vascular system is ready. Okay. Uh -huh. The piping system is, is in place. Everything is in place. Mm -hmm. Like this, mm -hmm. things are still developing. developing. Okay. Uh -huh. So, most plants the, the the correct number of leaves to choose from the top between number three to number five. From so yeah, from the top. Sure. So this is number one. One. This is number two. two three. three. Okay. Yeah. Three to, to number five. Three to number five. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not for rice. Rice is a different story. Yeah. Rice, rice do you, you don't use that uh, formula. Okay, so what you need to do is, um, has it been warm up? Warm up? Warm up? You need to warm up the machine first. For, for this, you can uh, turn on the light. Sekarang, sedih tak nampak. She did it. She did it. She did it. She did it and she even turned it into aquarium. <laughs> So we need to um, warm up for a bit. Have you have put it? Uh, so while waiting, this is going to be like, like, for for uh, some some minutes. Um, so we're going to do the FVFM. Then immediately after you have logged the data, the information of the fluorescent will be kept in the machine and the machine will use it for the calculation of PS2 mm -hmm. efficiency during light curve progression. Meaning that you are going to get PS2 value in every light intensity because light curve you change the intensity right? 200, 400, 500 because you did FVFM before that you're going to get PS2 efficiency in every single point. Not only that, you get the ETH as well, electron transport rate, ETH, ETR. How much does this machine cost? Uh, ask the salesman. <laughs> salesman, go. <laughs> Hundred plus. That's that's my rate. Should be in a day. <laughs>
Let's see. Who's gonna be? <clears throat> so in the meantime, I think I can show you uh, what's the we, we did it uh, test run yesterday using what did we use? Hibiscus. Hibiscus. Um, let's see. Is the folder here? Turn off this. Turn turn on this row. It's just too bright. Okay. Okay. Let's see. So um, this is the result that you get uh, from 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 our testing yesterday using uh, the hibiscus plant. So you can see uh, starting from row number seventeen. This is the measurement start. Above that, this is all the setting that we use. Setting of what? Setting all this. There are so many settings here. So whatever setting that you use, the machine will reiterate again. This is what you did to, to, to the machine. Okay. So the first row is actually the row that we did the FVFM. Okay. That's why it becomes negative the photosynthesis. There is no light. There is no light. So the FVFM is over here. Row AZ. And it's about 80% as well, 0 0.8, okay? And then the PS5, PS2, oh, nothing. Because there is no light. Yeah. Okay. So, and then we turn on the light, and then we acclimate the plant to the highest light point that we want, we decided to test, which is where? B, D, highlight. Highlight mana? DF. DF. Right. Okay, I need to highlight this. So this is the light setting. This is fluorescent setting. There is that's the very minimum. Did you see? 0 0.005. This is the measuring beam here. So we log the data for FVFM and then we we acclimate the plant to 1500 micromole of light. How much? 15, 1500, 1500 micromole. Uh, no, this is micromole. This is um, lux, lux is the measure of brightness. It only tells you about the uh, light intensity. This is light quantity. Quantity, see? Micromole over meter square. Yep. So we set it to 1500 and then we run the auto program. So progressively after about 100 seconds or so, it will change the light. As it changes the light all the way back to zero, it, it, it's, it's capturing all this data. Fluorescence, 5 PS2, you see? The 5 PS2 gets lower and lower as you dim, dimming off the light. So meaning that at 1500 micromole of light, the percentage of the P5 PS2 is 11%. It already managed to capture 80% of the light given. From this 80%, 11% proceeds to do the photochemistry. Yeah, what happened to the 89%? 89% can play around first or lost as MP, uh, non photochemical quenchings. Uh, this is not a healthy plant. We got it from just on, on the courtyard. Yeah, yeah. That's why I say uh, that's highly conserved. Highly, highly conserved the FVFM. No matter what it is, the plant still keep around eighty percent. Yeah, but the truth comes during five PS two. Can you utilize or not? Uh, this is the truth. It can utilize. Okay, Nizia nak tanya. So, at which point yang kita ada, kita ada photosynthetic carbon dioxide assimilation? Untuk light response curve. Photosynthetic carbon dioxide? Uh, untuk nak plot light response curve kan, uh, apa? Uh, light, light intensity against photosynthesis. Yes. So, kat mana kita dapat? Uh, kat depan ni. This, this two. This is assimilation. Uh, assimilation. This is incident light. This one just now. Uh, so, so against yeah, so you're going to get something like this. See, 
Q in is the quantum given to the leaf. Assimilation is the resulting um, uh, value. Lah. This we have arranged to, to make a nice curve. So, A2 is the assimilation. assimilation. Yeah, Q in is the quantum so given. So, this is assimilation? Lah. Yep, yep. Um, A on the y axis, assimilation on the y axis, Q quantum or irradiance on the x axis. Yeah, when you plot it, you're going to get something like this, which is biphasic. Yeah, biphasic, which if you uh, refer back to this uh, um, lecture just now, there is no, it's correct, there is no photo inhibition, but you can find the light saturation, there is a light compensation, yeah, and, and also there is a slope, so you can find out about the uh, quantum efficiency, which is the slope, the slope, cup, the first thing, first part of it. What's quantum yield? Quantum yield, uh, quantum, quant maximum quantum yield is FVFM. Maximum, maximum. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, that, that's that's why I said um, terminology is not standard. It's not standardized. Okay. To to avoid confusion, just sebab tu kita gunakan FVFM and phi PS2. By by symbol, by verbal wording. Dekat sini. I, I put it. I already put it. Maybe this is why people cannot cannot understand this well. Um, I put it here. Uh, this this slide. FVFM maximum quantum efficiency of PS two for the five PS two is the maximum efficiency of PS2 photochemistry in the light. That doesn't help. Takut, takut. Okay, okay, okay. But uh, I, I'm referring to the quantum yield of the fluorescent material. For example, uh, CPD. So. <coughs> Another word for it, effective quantum yield. Effective, why? Because this is the amount utilized by the photochemistry. Sebab tu nama dia effective quantum yield. Um, see, um, that should be optimal quantum yield. That's, that's a word, guna. Kejap. Do I use it here? Kejap, ya. Maximum quantum efficiency. How much quantum can it absorb? So, if you have a biomaterial, let's say a nanoparticle, mm -hmm. and a reporter is 30 to 40 percent quantum, mm -hmm. does that translate to uh, this material can absorb about 30 to 40 percent of the light or any kind of energy? Okay, okay. Since, since there is a word yield in that yeah. it's yielding what because in photosynthesis at least we know it's yielding um uh, it, it must be producing something at the end because this this is how this is work uh, the curve here the curve here when we're talking about the quantum yield for one unit of quantum absorbed here some unit of assimilation of carbon has happened this is the yielding part of it so for your case, what is the yielding part of it? Uh. Can we use a light bulb for it? Measure what? To measure the quantum yield of the CQD itself because it is a fluoresce. It fluoresces. Okay. So we want to measure how much light, what, how much will it fluoresce after it receives a known amount of light. Something similar like this, mm. but this one is not intensity against uh, a simulation rate. Uh, what we want is the, the, the light fluorescence against light intensity. Every FM definitely this thing can do. <clears throat> so you need to know how much it fluoresces and then what happened to the fluorescence. Uh, so we want to know how. Efficient is it at absorbing the light 
and emitting the fluorescence. This material in the form of what sheet? Uh, so this material is uh, a particle suspended particle in the suspended. Boleh 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 suspend dia lah. Uh, I think the best way to do that is uh, maybe this is like uh, halfway explain uh -huh. to explain that is actually you you need to use uh, integrated sphere integrated sphere that the physics ada this thing integrated sphere uh -oh. Because integrated sphere, you can you have a material, you 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 shine it uh, the material too. The past the sphere will quantify how much is bounced back, how much is absorbed by the material. Because people usually determine it using chemistry, which is this 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 thing. Uh, let me make it bigger. This is the sphere. So um. Um, uh, banyak size, banyak size. Ada yang besar dulu, ya. Ada yang like lebih as a big as a room. Okay. Um. So usually, what benda ni jadi adalah, you have your material dekat luar benda ni, out just outside of this, and then that material will absorb or transmit the known light given. And then the light will get into the sphere, and the sphere will analyze what happens to the light given after it has passed through the material. Is it transmitted 100%? Is it reflected? Or maybe it fluoresces? It, it, it will tell you. Yeah. So this is one way to do. The, um, the, this is not the setup actually. The setup is actually quite the, the, the whole bench. It's, it's, it's long thing. The flora can tell us this information. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Flora is just FVFM. FVFM. Just FVFM. You don't have to use this. You use just a regular floral chamber. Ada. Banyak company ada guna floral chamber. Yeah. This is meant to be for the plant, the leaf, the living. But if you're dealing with material science, there is a floral chamber dedicated for it. Yeah. yeah. So this is one one way to do it. Nah, kalau kalau nak, if you want to see, there, there are many settings. Uh, untuk ni integrated sphere. Uh, I think our physics patut ada uh, this thing. Tapi macam you said, uh, this machine can even measure weight. So whether it fluoresces or not. Uh, Boleh lah, FVFM dia. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe we try something. To the point of FVFM, this machine can. Yeah. Anything other than that? But whether it's yielding something or not, because it's not living, right? If it's living, this can quantify photosynthesis. Uh, so, fluoro, uh, fluoro chamber, fluoro chamber. Fluoro. Is it done? Okay. Sometimes you don't have to use uh, fluorescence. There is there there are, there are many kind of microscope. I don't know whether you pay another uh, photon imaging microscope, two photonic microscope. You can even use microscope for that to study to study the the material. <laughs> if, <laughs> You know, you know when 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 I was working with with orang putih, they, they just dumb me all this uh, problem. They just okay, we have the problem, we have the machine, make it happen. Okay. So just stay in the lab and make it happen for them. So, dapat lah. Ah, no, my PhD for for rice. That is side side. Other department come along to help them uh, because the matter has been stuck for forty years. They cannot go forward. So they come to to our department. Can you ask somebody to figure it out? They don't want to give it to the 
Oxford and Cambridge uh, students because they are thinking too smart. They want people who want to get it over with, Raja. So they give to me because I want to go back home quickly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's done. <laughs> okay, is it Tadama? Okay. Ah, so um, maybe come here. We'll show you how it's done. Um, so the the machine is is warmed up now. So we need to clamp the make sure the lamp put it together. Okay, open this. Buka for All right. When you want to clamp, you need to prev. Jangan pergi dekat mid rib. You need to. <coughs> Okay, this is going to be tricky because it's a cheese like all over so there's a good chance try to occupy the whole circle in here so that looks like okay yep okay. close it so this is about in the middle of the leaf okay all right so um somebody want to show uh what is happening? Ah, there it is. Okay. Alright, so um, you can start with the page, this page. This page. Um, number one, the adapt. You have done it. Now, go to number two and so on. Do we need to set the environment first? Uh, environment, that's it. Uh, okay. Ni boleh biar je. Okay. Okay. Go, go straight here. So, in the interface here, you can open this log file in the log setup. Okay, so go to the, so we we'll go to log setup and then logging option. So we need to go to log setup, next options. So this is uh, all the setting given by from like we can get this from the website. It is specific for. This step is protocol is specific for the determination of the emission. So just follow the settings here. Go to match option. Set to never match. Never match here. And then next, go to fluorometer option, which is this one. Oh, this is very important. You need to turn on light. And then the flash type will be rectangular. And the seconds will be 180. Okay, so after that, we need to open the log file. file. Yep. So open a log file. So for this, I will just create a new folder for this session, this training section. So uh, training, training. Training F L R done so we have the folder here already so we need to create a file so in this folder yep so we just press new file so this is um just uh, monstera monstera yeah. I scale. <laughs> okay so we, how do we uh identify the log is in or we can look at here. Mm -hmm. So if you have you seen this uh, image here, meaning that you already set up the log file. Mm -hmm. So every file will be uh, inserted into this file. Oh. All right. So what is the next steps? So after opening the log, set up a graph of operations. Yeah, you can set up the graph. I think this we we already turned we already set up yesterday, but I think we can go through again. Oh. So after that. We can go to the measurement tab. Mm -hmm. So at the measurement tab, graph yeah, graph F, which is this F. one. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of that, right? Yep. So graph F, which we already set up, which yep. is the fluorescence and the time. Mm -hmm. The Y axis is the fluorescence and the X axis is time. Okay. All right. And then we can skip that. So next, just acting it like, yeah. So go under environment. Like. Like. Environment light fluorometer. Mm -hmm. 
Parameter ah, setting. Yeah. yeah, ready, done. Yeah, configure the measuring bin. Under parameter, settings, measuring. This one, uh, parameter. Settings. settings. So is it the same measuring. with the settings? Measuring is on. Okay, so it's on. Yes. Huh? Dark mode read 50, 50 hertz. hertz. So, kena turunkan. Turunkan lah. jadi 50 hertz. Hmm. Yep. Alright. Dah, dah, dah. Dark mode read. Ah, add the settings. Okay. Florometry. Just, just follow the recommendation. This is should be pretty standard. Yeah, so the others just remains mm -hmm. the same. Alright. So next, go to configuring rectangular flash, which is here. This one. So it's at the red target, at thousand. Duration betul, tarik hundred hertz betul, margin five point six. All right. So next, okay, close the chamber, which we already done it. Okay. Observe the graph of F. You see the magic forces from the leaf, which you see less very quickly. Okay, so for here, um, we need to go to tab four, I think. Yeah. This. So the FTT should be approaching zero or has touched zero. The FTT. Which FTT. is this? The difference of fluorescence over time. Okay. Zero. So it looks like it's stabilizing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the fluorescent value. Oh. Mm. Oh, um, plants that is shaped right, memang dia fluorescent banyak. Memang fluorescent. This this is a uh, shaped plant. Oh. If you use rice, oh. the reading is about six hundred. Oh. Mm. No so meaning that much of the light given to the plant now fluoresces. So, kita tengok yang ni kan? Hmm, ni kena approach kosong. Oh, hmm. tapi dia tengah gerak-gerak. So, dia tunggu lagi sikit. No, it's, I think it's already... Ah, you can look at this. Oh, lepas hmm. tu... Uh, Tekan lock. Tap lock button. Yep. Yeah. Which is... Tapi, while you tap, you mm -hmm. This page. This page, right? Or the dispatch. Dispatch, right? Yes, okay. Florometer yeah. mm -hmm. result. Which is... Florometry. Mm -hmm. And then go to result. Energy settings. Computations. Yeah, this one. Okay. So already stable, right? So we need to press lock. So okay. when we press at this second, the machine will record uh -huh. the data. So since the plan is already are stable, mm -hmm. we will press lock. So wait for a while. Sorry, I, 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 how did you know that it was already zero? Oh. Uh, look at the DFDT. This should be approaching zero. But it must fluctuate. Ah, yeah. Oh, it has touched zero. It oh. will fluctuate. It will fluctuate. Mm -hmm. But the moment it has touched zero, when you at one point, it has stabilized. Right. During, for that region. Yeah, done. So, so you can. Mm. You got your FVF? Yeah, we got the FVF. Uh, so what is it? Zero. Point one at one, eight, one so one. about eighty one percent. Okay, but why we want to see is the five um, PS to like that. You need to like adapt first. Like adapt. Mm. Okay, mm. now we can. Um, the machine will keep this information, mm. and we can tell it to do the light curve. Uh. But to do the light curve, we need to acclimate the plant yeah. and the light. You cannot give the light straight away fifteen hundred. Mm. You need to gradually increase it. Okay. So we unclip it. Uh, no, 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 no. no. Okay, turn on the light, set all the environment okay. for gas exchange. Two, 200. Uh, uh, three, uh, two, two, uh, wait, this is house plan, right? Ah, uh, 100. Uh, 200, 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. 200. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to gradually it's, increase the light. So we start from 200. So usually this plan we can, uh, so go turn on the light. Lah. Turn on. So internally it will, yeah. internally it will flash. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. The, the light is on. You can see from the side the light is on now. Oh, yeah. oh, cannot, <laughs> I cannot see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Red, red, red. Oh, yeah. Red, red, red. Uh, right. So uh, the recipe is 
ninety percent red, ten percent blue. Mm. Mm. You still you still get blue. Otherwise, it's not a not open. It's not yeah. open. It's just not happening. Is this setting same for all? Uh no. This oh. is I know because it's in house plan. Oh. If rice, you can set set straight to five hundred. Mm. I don't know. I mean, um, but five hundred. How about the, the light ratio? Line, uh, oh, light ratio. Um, this is the basic. Uh, if it's stubborn, uh, uh, we will change the ratio to oh, increase a bit more blue line. I see. But for rice, this is fine. This is fine. But five hundred lah. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So to know the measurement, mm -hmm. tap one. In. Okay. And tap one. Yeah. And then zoom in. Make it about two minutes. Two minutes. Yeah. Two Minus minutes. two means two minutes ago. Zero means now. Correct. So the, this is the reading of. Uh, Purple is A, Explosion. green is R. Uh. Is it or blue? Purple. Purple. Uh, do we, have, we have three. One more is gas action. Uh, I'm not Remove sure. The blue Remove the blue. Okay. Um, okay. okay. So you need to make it stabilize. Mm -hmm. Now it is still negative. So you are looking at the blue line. Yeah. Now it is still negative. Yeah. 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 So it is oh, negative, meaning no, that res respiration is dominating still. Mm. Why? I think because the water is still not opening, so mm. negative. Mm. So, again, yeah, like this is 6 reply. And look at the time now. Mm. 12. 12. It's it's specific. Make, make, make the depression for 6 reply. Okay, but can we... Not yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be slow, but, but it will open. Uh. <coughs> I think given this definition, it will take about half an hour. Wow. Uh, if you want to eat now, I'll go to eat. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll, we'll just leave it here. Uh -huh. uh, give it half an hour. Okay. Just put it over there. Just put it over there. Ayah. 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 Yang tu sebab ni tab empat. Tadi ke tab satu dah. Tab satu dia different interface lah. Yang GSW tu stomata conductance to water vapor. Jadi untuk satu lah. Ah ah ya. Dia GSW simbol dia GSW. Meaning dia ah stomata conductance to water vapor. Dia ada banyak. Dia ada water, ada CO2, tapi ni spesifik untuk water vapor. So ni indikat untuk semata buka ketam. Ami bukan ada satu lagi. Ada dekat dekat ni. Kat kat office. Kami share tu juga. Dan boleh compare. Itu tak ni kan? Tak 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 betul. Kena prep dulu. Ah kena kena tak. Ini berapa lama jam ni? Okey betul satu malam. Satu malam. Satu malam. Satu malam. Lagi lagi betul. This one is good because we need it. Mm -hmm. But maybe another time we do the uh, the other time. The treated one, okay. This is try one. It's your first time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, don't rush things. If you if you rush this, what will happen? Take take time to absorb it. If you need to to get the result, uh, go to Hawaii vacation. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Dia doji ST sebab tu tak tidur kot High respond, responsive, high respond Some plant memang rapid response Padi, padi rapid respond Padi rapid respond, bougainvillea Tapi sebab ini semua memang Duduk kat luar. Ni semua pada duduk sepi tu je. Yeah, <laughs> Dik... I would think that yang duduk dekat, dekat luar. Dia macam ni, kalau if you said duduk di tingkap, nah. you need to take into account the the material of the window. Some window, dia punya VL transmission reduced by 40%. So, that actually have impact on the chloroplast development. Uh, so, it's even worse kalau window tu ada tinted. Selalu kita tinted, kita nak reduce UV. Tapi accidentally, you reduce VL, visible light as well. Tapi dekat mana mata kita, kita tak nampak, tak pokok ni nampak. Meaning that, you you get the intensity correct, but you get the light quality incorrect. The light the light that should be received by the plant may be 70% red, 30% blue. But since there is a window in the middle of the lighting, 
you get a wrong ratio of red and blue. Tadi you tak play around with that red and blue? Uh, I did, tapi dia sikit je increase. Dia sikit je increase. Uh, so, uh, I would think that uh, okra is responsive. Okra, okra should be responsive. Okra, okra, okra. Tambah kalau okra tu benih hybrid. Uh, dia responsive. Hmm, see? Dia dah, dia dah, dia dah, um, jadi 400. So, itu 400. The CO2, 400. So, so this plant is behaving lah. Even though kita tahu, since the plants are sleeping, but it's not a complete sleep. They are sleeping. Maknanya, uh, dia, uh, some plants are responsive lah. Walaupun dia tidur, Provi dia kejut dia. Pro provided kalau temperature tak tinggi sangat. Macam ni kan kita control temperature. 28 je. Uh. Ya. Kalau tak kat luar, tidur juga. Okay. Hmm, okay. So macam mana do you want to see the box ke? Ke macam mana? Uh, boleh je. Boleh. Okay. Uh. Okay. Um, Farah tu kena tunggu sekejap lah. Sebab kalau dapat pun sama je. Macam tu je. Exactly the same. Ah, exactly, exactly the same. Um, so if you want to go through the parameters in here, so I'll show you just the parameters that you can get. Uh, let's see. So once you have done it, these are the parameters that you can get. I'll just show you. And then we have the electron transport as well. This is the unit. Ah, uh, no, James kena buat ACI. This is current ETI. Current electron transfer rate for that second. Ah, uh, uh, James, James ni is different from a curve. For a curve, maksudnya for a given situation, the maximum achievable is this. Ini bukan pada curve. Ini pada uh, instantaneous measurement. Point, point, point. Yeah, point. So nak dia berubah. Okay. Kalau nak jemai tengoklah paling tinggi je lah Paling tinggi which is 59 59 reading cahaya adalah 1200 1500 55 micromole elektron saja. But when you reduce the light a bit It becomes 59 They increase 4 point So maksudnya The sweet spot lighting for this hibiscus Is 1200 in terms of electron transfer rate Ya yeah. <laughs> um, You, you mean what? The, um, sekejap ya Itu untuk tinggi Ya Ya, it increase as well From 11% to 14% 0.11 And then the the light The light um, um, Decrease Decreasing and the PS2 and PS2 and PS2 and PS2 Yeah, but Ah, ini kan testing Testing In in actual situation Light kosong mana ada? Pokok semua dah, dah tak buat apa dah So, um, even though it's, it's increasing um, As you Decrease the light you are actually trying to get this um, back slope. Honest slope, 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 slope. I know it's just right here somewhere. <coughs> yes, this slope. This slope. Yeah. And bear in mind, the one that I did for demonstrations, Madame. This is a rapid response. The, the 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 platinum grid of LRC from one point to another point waits twenty to twenty five minutes. This is only one hundred seconds. So ini macam ni cepat lah. Ni cepat. So you want to see a rapid pattern to see what's what's the pattern like? So yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's why you 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 see can it's kind of abrupt. So we know lah. Uh, memang kalau bagi light kurang, memang dia akan jadi lebih efficient. Yeah. Yeah. And and finally, benda benda kat belakang ni is the the um, quantum punya uh, value or the or the light given to the plant 
or the light absorbed by the plant because the machine knows what it gives and then they tahu berapa daun tu dah serap for example it gives it 1000 about 200 yeah two kilo absorb quantum absorb yeah Nikoh and then you can set lah, whether it's a broad leaf, uh, we, we always do so, a broad leaf ah, yeah. ah, And... Tunggu kejap lah, then boleh add this, then start lah, then kita ambil Try, try lah, slow up, slow up, try, 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 try Uh, dengan syarat dia boleh clamp dalam tu boleh boleh hmm. so um, turn off the light turn off the light buat the setting fluorescent um ni nak off no ni um the the setting for the beam measuring beam turn off measuring beam first Hmm. Uh, this that's that's on uh, uh two point five cm across it. No, no, the the go to fluorescent fluorometry, turn off measuring beam. Now the measuring beam is on. Okay, go to measurements, page four. Look at the fluorescent signal. Zero right. Uh, almost zero. Oh, zero lah tu. Ini nak ini zero. Zero. Tapi jangan lagi lagi dalam tu ni. Stop. Cuba tu lampu. Tu lampu. Ada foil. Di mana pak? Ah, tu foil. 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 Zero? Oh, uh, yeah. Almost. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so I think you can clamp. Uh, because they want to test with their materials. I think you can. I think that's it. Yeah. So we'll we'll see the base reading without light at all, and then with measuring light, and then with saturating flash. So this is a control without any yeah. magnitude. Tekan lock. Yeah. So that's around lock pending. Let me check minus five. Okay, let's put this thing.
So that's about three. That's very very minimum. Mm -hmm. Um. So turn on the measure again. Off. Oh. Off. Oh. Oh. So now this setting is fifty hertz, which is just with uh, with 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 the minimum of it. Okay. So look at the transistors now. Um. We wait for it to. Stabilize. Is this setting the purpose of? Mm, yeah, mm. that took out. That's really fun. Okay. Um, what about the flash? And thousand. Flash. Okay. I imagine. Okay. So this is rectangle. I'm actually. <laughs> okay, um, computation parameter, computation. Is it point four? Mm. Okay, yeah, we need to change this. Um, the setting, I think you change the setting onto light adapted, mm -hmm. change setting onto um, dark adapted. Dark adapted. Uh, no, 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 the, the setting for this. Oh, okay. Because we, we, we changed earlier for LRC. I think I call it. I think I call it. The num this number. No, not this number. This. This. I think it's somewhere. Okay. Some yeah. Okay. Okay. Could I be careful? It's not to happen. Slow control. Verbal light. This is how it gets. I got the leaf. Why are you not there? I need. You see, this is just a bit up. Oh, that's lagi. Ah, why is this? Ah, uh, thermometer constant. Thermometer, dia macam ni. Ada change tak? Tak change ya. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alright. So we just make we want to make sure this is the setting. Should be this, this setting. Select one. F not F M dot. Should be this setting. Ni kan. Find this. We need to. We need to this is the setting. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Dia kena cut lock. Thermometer option. Ah, tu. Yep. Right. Okay. Right. Right. Thank you. All right. Okay. So go back to the graph tadi tu, and then you can lock. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. Competition, no competition. Okay. Yes, no. Let's see. We can do two settings. One meant for dark adapt, which is what we're doing now. And another is light adapted. Negative one. Negative one means <laughs> negative negative one. Mm, okay, interesting. Uh, <laughs> it's that this was. So, um, this shows that. Um, things are not being really absorbed by the material. Maybe it goes through. That's transparent because with the leaf, it gets it gets absorbed. Yes. It gets absorbed and it passed around. With that thing, it seems like nothing is absorbed. Um, I don't know what what do you expect to see. Control maybe nothing. Okay. But uh, the next material. Okay. So so this 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 seems like nothing is absorbed. It's yeah. just passed through. 
Okay. Okay. Pass through. Okay. Good. Good. That's what you expect. Okay. All right. Okay. So you can change the material. Uh, we can do it. Um. Okay. Meaning that nothing is bouncing around. It's just a pull through. Signals. Yes, your mom. Okay. <coughs> because this setting has been geared towards leaf, mm -hmm. therefore the RH here is rather high. So my concern is with this setting, mm -hmm. which is not optimized for this material, is mm -hmm the water vapor kind of interfering with the signals. I see. Yeah. So, we we just carry on for now. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but uh, late, later, you can actually make the minimum RH so that it's not interfering with the signal. Um, okay. Just, just do it. Lock. Uh, lock, lock. Boleh semua takut nak tekan. So... Mm. So minus one. So just now, Rafa? Also on. This is one point one point five. So minus also. Uh, just now was one point minus one point six. This I think negative means some something. Jump. If it's positive, something gets it because it's fluoresce. So something get absorbed. So something get absorbed. Mm. Something get absorbed. If you if you look at the the equation, how many people match it? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Look at people match it. Yeah, table at the equation. But uh, this one is uh, what what kind of light is it using? Uh, uh, this is measuring very minimum light. This yeah. light. Yeah. Measuring the. the is it blue or what? Uh, red. Rate. Far, far rate. 740 oh, nanometer. This thing absorbs at 350 to 450. Oh, no. This doesn't have a UV equipment. Ah, 340, ah. that's UV. I see. UV, uh, that's, uh, you need different equipment for that. Mm. Um, because the so flash... Here you said the blue light, you can able to read. Blue, blue, um, the flash given by the red light. The blue light is during the photosynthesis. It's part of the light ratio. Uh -huh. Actinic light, they call it. Actinic light means light that trigger photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And blue and red. Blue is 440 nanometer. Yeah. For the red, 640 nanometer. This is the so there's no way we can um, If you want to, to have the laser whatever coming to the materials, uh -huh. Be, uh, below 400 nanometer, that's not possible because not possible, not possible because it's not equipped with, with the UV ah, light. I see. Okay. 340 nanometers, that's UV C. Yeah, UV C. PVA. It should be the other one. Right? A. But C. A. 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 But, um, is that the reason why we are seeing also negative? Yeah, yeah, because the, the equation. Um, this is me, doctor. Uh, this, this is how it's, it's calculated. This is FFM. This is how it's calculated. Um, maximum fluorescence minus initial fluorescence. Yeah. That, that means this not fluorescent is higher than maximum fluorescence. Meaning that the, the, it, it doesn't fluoresce at all. Something gets absorbed entirely. Maksudnya, it's it's um instead of fluorescing as you what you would hope, mm -hmm. it's absorbing and keeping it somewhere. Right. Yeah. So so that's why it's it's negative. Right. Meaning that um, F not higher than F M. Yeah, F not is higher. Yeah. Than F. So 
which means the the match the 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 F zero where you shoot the measuring yeah. itself yeah. is showing higher value. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. maybe it's not suited for, for this because if you want the laser to be three forty nanometer, that's in a spectral photometer. Right. I, I think we have to see that on the way we broke the data. But with that, can we also measure the FPS? Um, no, but you can uh, uh, study the absorbance. Yeah, that one I have done. Uh, so I was just wondering if this... Um, because we cannot control this. Because our UV is not needed by the plant. And this is the plant equipment. That's why... That's why they did... <laughs> you want to travel to say this is one this is for four twenty nanometer blue for the red six forty six fifty nanometer no 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 blue blue um the flash the flash is done by red it's not done by blue 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 is just a small portion of it to trigger the tomato to open. No. But not just um but, but if you want to see if we eliminate the red but just the blue we can move the nothing up. So um we make it on this thing just but just make it zero. Yeah, that's blue. Is it blue? Yeah. It's blue? Yeah. Okay. So that is blue. Now let's look at the uh eh. the can look. I want to press the leg, okay? Yeah, tengah leg. Let's make sure you buy blue. Can you okay? Why? 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 Oh. Okay. One, three. Can you like that? So I pass on blue because this is for men for photosynthesis. Um. So if you just assume that everything goes well, yeah. Um. Five zero two. Can I put it like that? I guess I. Four cents. FM hundred two point nine. This thing absorbing thing. Is 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 absorbing. Is absorbing. Is is absorbing this this blue light. Because FM find this light is two point nine. If it's not absorbing, this should be crazy higher, like two hundred three hundred. But here it's only two point nine. So this signifies this thing is absorbing. Oh, okay. But we cannot see the fluorescence here. Minimum fluorescence here. If for if fluorescence minimum at least for this wavelength, for this for for this blue wavelength. So maybe it will be a different story if you tested with UV light. Ah, yes, yes. UV light, higher energy. Yes. Higher energy and UV light if. You use UV uh, of shorter wavelength, it can even penetrate. Yeah, yeah. But we don't have it, right? <laughs> no, 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 because, because uh, UV is not needed for plants. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. you. you want me to give suggestion how to go about this? But uh, the aspect is characters using the aspect counter. Um, 
the simple but not proven way is you need to have a separate UV light subject the material to UV light and then quickly put, put it into here so that you can measure while it is fluorescing while it is fluorescing this machine can detect the signal but don't ask it to uh, excite the material that it cannot do so you need a separate system to to do the excitation of the material then it gets excited it's glowing do whatever put it in the machine measure it then it can measure mm. That's also skill quality. Uh, for now, the only people do is by doing some chemistry. Mm. You measure the quantity. So in the future, exactly how they measure quantity? Like, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, is it measured liquid? Uh, 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 the bone, so they can do it. Flor, 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 fluorescence. You need, you need equipment dedicated to, to measure fluorescence then. Um, can you get a spec meter? A spec meter, I don't know. I don't know, where are you? I don't know. 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 The red is also. No, no, it's in the cupboard. Cupboard. It's near the back, right? Ah, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes the back is not in the cupboard. Cupboard like COVID. It's just so you don't want to give me. We we have a, a machine to measure uh um uh, liquid nitrogen. This yeah, so this, this is actually a laser. Maybe you can try with this. Ah, uh, but still, it is 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 um that red region. Red. Keep, keep, keep. Uh, you, you, you should be doing that, uh, uh, using that integrated sphere. Physics, the department physics or whatever. So, chemically, how people do it? They kind of suspend it in solution. They can do reaction, basically. That's the standard that we point this out. Ah, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So dia bandingkan dengan standard. And see uh, the it, whether it fluoresces or otherwise. Okay. So once it fluoresces, people measure using spectral spectral photometer. Tapi kunci tu orient kan? Because one thing is, I remember there is a chamber that we need to purchase mm -hmm. so that you know when the when the, the, the thing is excited and it emits light, mm -hmm. it's not reflected out of the chamber. That's the concept of integrating sphere. That's integrating sphere actually. That's integrating sphere. Integrating sphere, the moment the, the laser gets into the sphere, after it has passed through the material, it will bounce back into the, sp into the sphere until every single photon is accounted for. Then only you can open the sphere. Until it is, it's not done, nobody can open it. It, 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 it will blinking. It's measuring, it's measuring, it's measuring. Yes, I mean, I think the chamber still needs that. I'm not sure because most of the people don't use that. Don't use it. It's sort of like, I'm going to do some calculation. Yeah, that's a form of it. 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 We actually tried to install that equipment, but it was too expensive. Then, said no, no one. I got that. But well, you need to excite oh, the material first. So that's that's one thing, lah. This this machine, lah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nina, eh, tapi, okay. Ah, uh, dah kan, ilik bawah. 
So measurement, um, if you are a male, or not, um, do you have what's the soonest measurement? Ah, uh, we know where he hide the key la. <laughs> <Tempat Right. lah. laughs> Dimaafkan. Dimaafkan. Just to confirm whether this thing absorb red light or not. Tutup blue light. So is this control? This is not the absorb. Absorb. Because if it gets through the top laser, there's a sensor at the bottom. It absorb red light. Yes, it absorb red light. It absorb red light. At least the red light um, for this nanometer. Mm. Because if the red light can pass through, you will get the reading because there's a sensor. Okay. Mm. So it makes you wonder. R red, red light is absorbed, other light still can pass through. So that's why it's transparent. This you can see stuff. Because blue light with the progression of time turns into red as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it energy. Yes, it energy. That's how people quantify the distance of the galaxy far, far away. Red shifting. It's called red shifting. <laughs> this is not visit department, but um, so, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, all right, okay. I think uh, if you don't have further questions, I think that's about it. I need to prep for my department for the stuff now, yeah. But it's on here it's the, in the lab next one, yeah. Okay, is that is that all? About the four? Sorry, <laughs> why, why don't you get this paper? I mean, yeah. no. Oh, no, no. Okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Can you share with us the presentation that yeah. you yeah. Everything will be given. Nobody's keeping anything. Apa? <laughs> Hmm. Maybe you hmm. should uh, have somebody for the material scientist to help you to, to, eh? to quantify stuff. Ah, <laughs> yeah. 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 With the progression yeah. of yeah. technology, yeah. 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 even the interpreter yeah. sphere is the old ha. Uh, <laughs> But there's a refinement of it now. Kalau tak ada value, kalau ada value, dia pasti juga. Kalau tak, kalau tak ada value, dia tak boleh. Yang tercetak. Fizik, I think yang tercetak tak mahal. Macam ni, eh, boleh buat tercetak. Kompas tu. Sebab ada dua sensor. Kalau atas ni dah absorb, bawah ni tak baca. Sebab ada dua value. I'm just, I'm just a petty part. Ah, dia tak ada value. Alright, okay, that's another one. So, uh, no. uh